please share it for us put it in a watch party and also share the broadcast for us we'll be very very grateful if you can do that if you can do that just share it pass it on to somebody put it into some watch party um, send it into a group that you already belong to invite friends invite loved ones to join in so that we can all fellowship and do this thing together hallelujah okay so we have been looking at infidelity in marriage or unfaithfulness in marriage and we have seen the we, we've looked at the causes we define what it is and then we've looked at the causes of infidelity and the things that create uh, 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 infidelity and then we have also looked at the dangers where infidelity happens the effects that infidelity uh, brings into any marriage but we're going to go on today we're going to look at when infidelity has happened can the marriage be restored can any marriage that has gone through infidelity be restored and so i'm asking you this question mommy can any marriage that has gone through infidelity be restored can anything be restored yes 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 and um, before we go into that i want to bring greetings to yeah. everybody it's always a pleasure to come here yeah. may god bless you always for staying with us and always for joining us on this program and um, i would kindly ask that we all share yeah um let's share let's share the broadcast let's invite our friends and family and let's have a beautiful time in the presence of the lord together yeah, so we are looking at whether infidelity, whether a marriage can be restored after infidelity or after a, a marital. Oh, no, they're saying more volume. It's more our volume, volume low. Volume, volume, volume. Our volume seems to be low. Uh, is this thing connected properly? Oh, can we let's check if it's connected properly? If not, okay, okay, let me let me see something. Is the volume any better? Please check your thing. Yes, so they all say sound is more volume. Please. More volume. Sound is low. Is the sound better now, please? Oh, sound is really low. Is the sound better or it's gone? Is it gone? Is the sound any better now? Please check your volume. Check your volume. We are trying to check the volume. We are trying to check the volume. Sound is really low. Is it any better? No, I changed something here. So I wanted to see if. Or will you connect it here rather? All right, okay. Let's see if you have a place to connect it there. Okay, this you can't hear yeah. at all. Not really. You need to say not really. All right, plug it in there. Is there a place to plug it in there? Yeah. Okay, please just give us a few minutes. We're working on the sound, please. Still very low. Still very low. Hello, any better? very low still very low okay. if it doesn't work we'll go into the study don't <laughs> worry and restart uh we are working on sound yeah 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 uh it, it should be better it now sounds forward. please i can't hear you well. is it better now you can't hear well you can't Your hear voice well sounds far away no worry okay i must say it's no worry is it better is it um, any better please <laughs> right they still say okay oh, yes, yes it's, it's okay, okay now okay, it's okay. okay thank you sound is better so we don't need this thing all <laughs> right what a waste of time <laughs> what a waste of time all right okay 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 it's good it's now good. hallelujah all right we bless god so we've done the roll call please share it for us please share for us and everybody please like laugh hello us let all the likes and the love and the, and the share increase and then also let's share and then put it into a watch party whatever you can do so that everybody can hear us now that you can hear us let them also hear us sound is very loud now awesome 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 we talk so why did you make us it's her fault <laughs> i know it's not so for you okay so let's go back to business let's go back yeah, to business yeah 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 yeah. i was saying that you asked the person whether, yeah um, 
a marriage can be restored after infidelity. Yeah. And I think the answer is yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Dela Dev, it's good to have you. God bless you. The answer is a big yes. However, mm -hmm. there are conditions. It mm -hmm. will only be restored mm -hmm. if both parties are willing to work with God and with themselves. Mm -hmm. Because when infidelity occurs, there's a lot of pain, there's mm -hmm. a lot of hurt, the, the trust in the marriage is broken, yeah. the hurt around the marriage is broken. Mm -hmm. So, so many things um, need to be put in place. Yeah. So if both parties are willing to work with God and with themselves, mm -hmm. then yes, a marriage can be restored where there's infidelity. Marriages can sometimes even get better after infidelity. Hmm. As the couple will learn lessons and also see the reality of how it feels like hmm. if they were to lose their spouse and therefore they, be, they, they become a break, 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 break these things you just said a little more. Break, break, break it down. Yeah, okay. break so, it down. number one, yes, if both parties are willing to work with God and themselves, mm -hmm. then um, a marriage can be restored where there's infidelity. Mm -hmm. Because where there's infidelity, a lot of hurts take place, mm -hmm. trust is gone out of the marriage. Yeah, um, there's no security is lost as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and therefore you cannot be yourself you don't think you are not sure of what is going on yeah however if you are mm -hmm. willing to work on yourself and mm -hmm. you're willing to work with god mm -hmm. then yes you can restore the marriage right. and i went on to say that marriages sometimes even get better mm -hmm. after an episode of infidelity in mm -hmm. the it is not always true mm -hmm. but sometimes it is it gets better because once there's infidelity, the couple will begin to, the couple will learn lessons. Mm -hmm. How to live in such a way that there will not be another episode of infidelity. Yeah. They tend to value each other more. Mm -hmm. they, they tend to care about each other. And they tend to become a lot more careful. Mm -hmm. in, in, for instance, in a case where carelessness mm -hmm. led to um, the infidelity occurring in their marriage, mm -hmm. then they tend to be a lot more careful. Right, right, right. So where there's been... Uh, infidelity and uh, there's been a, the, the fear that hey we might lose this marriage and all that uh when there is a restoration now people become a lot more careful how to treat each other so that the marriage does not uh, uh, uh get out of hand okay so now that we have come to understand that a marriage that has gone through infidelity can be restored can we look at how this can be done what are the methods? What is the process? How can a marriage that has gone through infidelity now see restoration? How can they be restored? Right. I think the first thing that both parties will have to understand mm. is that they must both be willing to want the marriage. Yeah. I mean, just recently I heard, a, I came across a story. I was mm. actually told by one of the um, um, parties mm. in the in the in the marriage mm -hmm. that there was a case of infidelity yeah and one of the parties decided i don't want this marriage anymore mm. almost everything was done by the other party to restore the relationship yeah but this person said no i don't want it so if um, a marriage will be restored after mm -hmm. infidelity yeah both parties must really want the marriage they must want they must marriage. want the marriage they it's like okay no matter and, and on the other hand i've mm -hmm. come across cases mm -hmm. and i've heard cases where there has been infidelity, mm -hmm. but because both parties wanted the marriage, mm -hmm. they were able to restore the marriage, mm -hmm. even though there has, been a, there has been infidelity. We will not always, or we can't always say that mm -hmm. where there's infidelity, a marriage comes to an end, yeah. or that is the end of the marriage mm -hmm. because there has been infidelity. Mm -hmm. There are situations where the marriage can be saved, yeah. but both of you must be must want, want it. it. So how do you know that you want a marriage? Or you know that Let me you just want, throw this. Yeah, you. I, I think you know that you want a marriage mm -hmm. where you you realize that okay, no matter what has happened, mm -hmm. I, this is a person I still love. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go and sing or fornicate or commit adultery, mm -hmm. but you realize that even though you have gone outside of your marriage, mm -hmm. this person is a person you want to spend your life with. Mm -hmm. This person is a, is a person where you truly, truly love because, mm -hmm. Pastor, you know what? Not all adultery is committed out of excitement. Yeah. You know, when we were talking about... I like that, yes. Not all adultery is committed out of excitement. When mm. we were talking about the causes of adultery, mm. one of the things we said was revenge something. 
Mm-hmm. Revenge. Revenge. Uh, I mean, protest adultery. Protest adultery. So when there's a protest adultery, you are not committing adultery because you don't like your wife or your husband, but mm. because you want to prove a point. Mm-hmm. In that case, you may not necessarily commit the adultery because you are loved with the person mm-hmm. you are committing the adultery. So mm-hmm. not all adultery is done out of excitement. Mm-hmm. I know there has been adultery where the parties engaged in the adultery, I mean, in pain. Mm-hmm. They were committing the adultery. They didn't the want it. They didn't want out of the pressure. Exactly. They didn't want it, but some way, somehow, they found themselves in 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 this. Or let's say in loneliness, they've been left somewhere yeah. alone. And that's it's cold. It's, it's raining. Cold. Let's say they've it's traveled it's abroad. They've gone to Canada. <laughs> it's cold. And it's it's raining. raining. And then the sister decided to bring them food. And out of their loneliness and their sorrowness. And uh, uh, this sister brought the food, and the food was nice. And after eating the food, uh, the lady, the, the lady decided to keep you company because he felt you were lonely oh, and you didn't know what to do. And before you realized, you had done what you didn't want to do. Yeah. So, in such instances, you did not commit the adultery with excitement. And most of these. So, that's circumstantial adultery. adultery. Yes. Okay. And sometimes, uh, when some of these adultery occurs, where mm. the person did not do it willingly mm-hmm. or it was out of a circumstance, mm. they actually confess immediately to, yeah. to the other party. Yeah, that's something that's happened. Yes, to this is what has happened to me, or this is what's what they, 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 they may even request, request prayer from you that yes. listen, pray with me. Yes. I've fallen into is, something. This is what is happening. In that case, you could see that this is a person who really wants the yeah, marriage. Innocent adultery. Inno- innocent adultery. Mm-hmm. They really want the marriage. So they are not going to just let go of you because you have committed adultery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. So that is how you know that you you you, you still want the marriage. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons. Well, that's one of the things. Where you know that this my, my spouse committed this thing, but it, it, it wasn't premeditated. It's not his nature. It's not her nature. No. They fell into something. Yeah. And in this case, sometimes you may rather even apply compassion. Be and you rather, well, say, let me help this woman out, out of, of this thing. Yeah. Let me help this man yeah. out of this thing. Because it's not them. It's something that has happened to them. Okay. And, and sometimes you may think that, okay, I want to get out of this marriage. Or I want to commit adultery. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you have committed. But then you realize that. Even after I committed adultery, it cannot be compared to the relationship I have with my husband yeah. or my wife. So you go and test the waters <laughs> and you come back again. That will make you know that no. So there's actually nothing nice out there. Mm-hmm. What I have is actually the better. Best. I will stick to that. Yeah. Right, right, right. We bless God. I hope you are sharing. I hope you are sharing because we want to trust God for some good revelations today. So please share, put it into a watch party, uh, whatever you can do to make sure that it goes out there. Make sure that you do so. All right, so number one, route to restoring a marriage after infidelity or adultery is that both parties must want the marriage. I think another thing that will make you know that you want the marriage is the amount of investment you have put into the marriage. Yeah. You see, where like the scripture that says that where your treasure is, there will your heart also okay. be. So, so sorry, Pastor. So David is saying that mm-hmm. giving that infidelity brought forth a child, proven by being and it can mm-hmm. be restored, mm-hmm. or the, although the child will forever be there be a reminder yes. yeah even yeah. when there's a child involved mm. and the, the marriage can still be restored mm-hmm. and like we said you have to want it mm-hmm. you you really have to want that marriage you really have to want that marriage otherwise it will not it will not work yeah you cannot one person cannot die for a marriage it has to be both parties it has mm-hmm. to be both parties. so you have to decide that yes this has happened there's there's a child involved in it but i will still want it mm-hmm okay okay oh no okay <laughs> all right okay okay good 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 all right okay okay great so th- these are things for you to know that you you want them married all right okay so both parties must strongly want the marriage where there is no wanting of the marriage there's a likelihood that the 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 they will give up on the marriage walk away okay all right what is the next i think another reason Another thing that will help in the restoration of a marriage after infidelity is that there must be a genuine acknowledgement of sin and repentance. The, yeah. the party who has uh, committed the adultery must come clean and, and, and actually confess and listen, this is what I have done. But in some cases, so like the, 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 the person who has done the thing does not even... Uh, 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 um, See, that is where it becomes very difficult. If you know mm. how to acknowledge your sin, yeah. If you know how to acknowledge your sin, you 
you are easily forgiven mm -hmm. because it's a step towards repentance. Mm -hmm. Repentance. Yeah. But there are people who will not acknowledge their sins. Once will they will not they will not mm -hmm. acknowledge their sins mm -hmm. like okay i've done it and so what mm -hmm. if you go i have done it and so what mm -hmm. then it's very difficult you need to acknowledge your sin you must be willing to say that yes this is what i did and don't give excuses for doing that don't be giving excuses why you committed is there any reason why you should commit adultery i think no there should mm -hmm. really not be any tangible reason why you, you want to commit adultery well some may say that they have reasons some may say they have reasons, reason? like some of the things we've talked about. Yeah. Let's say they are not being given, 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 given. They may get to a point where they say, listen, I'm tired. I I, I need to vent. I need to get out somewhere mm -hmm. and do this. So as for the, the excuse, we, we, yeah. may, we may never know whether somebody has a genuine reason or not why they may fall into uh, infidelity. But for their marriage to be restored, the yes. one who has offended should be bold enough to admit that listen i have messed up i have yeah. missed it what i have done is wrong i have sinned again like the prodigal son the prodigal son came home and he ran to his father and said father i have sinned against heaven and against you forgive me i'm not even worthy to be called your son again but rather take me as one of your servants so when a person has committed infidelity what will help bring restoration about that they will be able to go to their husband or their wife and say listen please i have sinned against you i have i have committed an unpardonable sin i need your mercy i need your grace just have mercy upon me and forgive me but in this day and age does that happen easily no 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 no, no. Hey, because there's a lot of pride yeah, yeah, uh, yes, one, there's a lot of pride and people are not always willing to come clean and say that this is what I have done. Secondly, the, the fear of what will, I mean, befall them after they have come clean, how they will be treated. I mean, sometimes you come clean, you commit adultery, you come clean, and for the rest of your life, your mm. spouse will use it against you. To yeah, for we, we are going to talk about some of yeah. that, but yeah, that is very, very true. Yeah, your spouse will use it against you 24-7. So but then you deserve it. You should be ready to take it because you knew all that and you still went in for it. You know, sometimes you don't know. You just, you know, sometimes adultery is spontaneous. <laughs> Yeah, I think we need a spontaneous adultery. Yeah, sometimes that you don't really on plan, on plan adultery. Emergency adultery. <laughs> God, deliver us from such things. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing. So emergency adultery. That one, uh, uh, but you must be ready. You see, you see, you see, you, we have to understand that the wages of sin is that sin has consequences. Yes. If you've gone to commit adultery, you must be ready to be chastised yes. and yes. castigated. Yes. You shouldn't think that if you know you've committed adultery, you, you can still go about your life without any any consequences, any, any repercussions. <laughs> that is not possible. So you should be ready for it. Uh, 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 another thing I have to remember is that the offender must be willing to give the offended party all the time and space they need to heal and to forgive. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't force forgiveness. No, you know, sometimes people say, Oh, I, I did it, I told her I'm sorry, and she's still not forgiving. She, she it's taking one week, she has not forgiven me. One week. Because when you get to hear that your spouse has committed adultery, how 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 I know that you, you may not have experienced it before, but how do you think that the shock, the pain yeah. that you go through, do you think that a person can forgive and forget really? within a day? No, 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 no. It, sometimes it takes years. Mm. It may sometimes take years for a person to forget about that adultery because there are things that will remind the person. Yeah. Your very presence will remind your yeah. spouse of adultery. When it gets to the times of intimacy, mm -hmm. they may be thinking, is this what you did with the person? Did you mm -hmm. do that? That will remind them of adultery. That's, will that happen on the same basis? Let's say if the person came to confess on their own or those who were trying to hide it and you caught them, it is the effect the same? Yeah, I think the effect is the same. Whether the person that's what I think I may be wrong, whether the person comes to confess or not, mm -hmm. their mind is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And when something gets into the mind, mm -hmm. it's really very difficult to take it out. Mm -hmm. If you come to tell me I've committed adultery, mm -hmm. I mean so many things will start going into my mind. Yeah. In my mind, when did you commit it? Why did you commit it? Even how how you committed it will that's one thing. Did you remove her skirt? Did he did she remove your what happened? What, what styles were you? Sta yes, were the legs you, up or down? You, you, you <laughs> So it's, it's, you cannot just you cannot easily forget about um that aspect that okay I committed adultery I expect you to forgive me within a week it doesn't work like that so it's it's and not then, like I stepped on your toes no oh I I and then the other thing is that we have to remember that emotions are also involved here mm -hmm. and emotions are very 
and spirits are also spirits involved. Are also involved. It, they are very powerful. You cannot easily forget it within a day. It will take time. Wow. So, so when you have committed anything like that, be ready to give your spouse a lot of time to heal and to forgive. Don't force the forgiveness. Don't force the forgiveness. Don't like, yeah, I told you I'm sorry. Let's just let bygones be bygones and let's carry on. It is not easy. It's not easy because intimacy, I think it's 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 the strangest thing on earth for two people and, and, to come together to do that. And I know that Satan has made us commonize it so much in our generation, but it's a very, very deep thing. It is, and and like I keep saying, it is very, very spiritual. Mm. It is just like praying, but mm -hmm. it's it's there's it's, there's the spiritual force attached to it. That's mm. the reason why God says that do not commit adultery, don't fornicate, because mm. it is it is not as easy as drinking mm. a glass of water. Mm. It is very very deep. Mm. And then I and then, and then also there must be the willingness to forgive and forget, unless unless is. you see we say that yeah that we must give you time, mm. but at the end of the day the marriage cannot go on if the offended party is not ready to say, hey, I've been offended, my spouse has sinned against me, but I am ready to let it go. Until then, you cannot assume that the marriage is carrying on. No. There must be willingness to forgive and forget. Now, how will the offended party be able to do that? How will the offended party... How will you be able to forgive? What are the things that will aid forgiveness? Number one, prayer. Because it, forgiveness is... is it's not easy. It's a very mm. difficult thing. Mm. You will need the grace of God to forgive a spouse who has committed adultery against yeah. you. So you need you will need a lot of prayer. Mm. You will need a lot of compassion as mm. well, depending on the circumstance that that led to the adultery. Yeah, you need a lot of compassion, and mm -hmm. you you will need time. Mm -hmm. well. You will mm -hmm. need time. You will not be able to forgive your spouse immediately. You have to understand. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself that it will not be easy for me to forgive. I yeah. need time to forgive. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, the thing will be coming up. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, you will be hearing. I mean, the devil will be bringing all kinds of things into your mind to remind you of the adultery that took place. Right. So you, you also need to be very strong-minded. You need to be very strong-minded and discipline your mind that, okay, no matter what comes and no matter what um, I, I hear, mm -hmm. I should be able to let go of it. Right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Can I just read a few Yes, comments? read a few comments. Please so, share, if you haven't shared it, please share it for us. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't that. Put it into a watch party. Uh, I don't have our books here to show you, but <laughs> please share it, share it, share it, share it for us. We are very little today, so share it for us. Let's reach out to as many people as we can. God bless you. Yes, right, so I'm reading read comments. comments. This is a gift is saying that if you take months to commit adultery and you want her to overcome it in a day mm. or a week, most women are emotional hoarders. They need time. Yeah. To yeah. And Christina is saying that I think if the person came to confess, it's better than when you caught him or her. Mm -hmm. Then you know that that person is not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially yeah, when they come to confess, you know mm -hmm. that yes, they, they are repented. Yeah. You know, they're saying that pastor, the offender should admit that he has done wrong first. That really helped with the healing process. Yeah, I think we've mentioned that already. Yeah, yeah we mentioned that that is true. Yeah. Uh is that all the comments you want to Patricia is saying, please can I get a number for yes, Patricia? I will Patricia will number. put the number I'll put the number on the screen. Is, is, it, is it on the page? The number is on the, the number is on the Mario School I'll page. Put it on the screen for this you page. So make sure you like this page. You follow this page as well, and then at the YouTube page as well. Uh, we will give you the number. The number will be put on the page as we carry on. Some of you already have the number. If you have it, you can put it up there for us. But please share. Let's reach out to as many people as possible. Don't be a spectator. And those of you watching from outside. Who have been coming? Please click on the broadcast and come in so we will know you are there. God bless you. 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 All right. Okay. What else? What else, mommy, can we uh, 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 do in order to restore, bring restoration to a marriage after there has been an adultery? Right. What we can do is that there must be a genuine willingness to forgive and forget, mm -hmm. like we have said. Yeah. A genuine willingness to forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Right. And and we also said that the, 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 the couple must be able to see a new marriage 
from the old broken one. The, the last time we, 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 we uh, uh, were on, we said that once adultery takes place, the marriage has been broken. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. So if forgiveness is going to take place, if there is going to be any form of uh, let's continue, we are starting a new marriage yeah. completely. Yeah. Every time adultery takes place, if the couple decide to forgive and continue it is not the old marriage they are continuing yes. it is a brand new marriage they yes. are starting mm. and if you're going to start a new marriage you should have a fresh vision of a new marriage mm. that marriage is not going to be like the old marriage it used to be things must change things because change. if the old marriage was good enough it will not have led to the adultery to yes. start with yes. if the old marriage was solving all the problems it will not have led to the adultery. So once adultery takes place, we will have to understand that if we are going to go on, then we are going to create, we must have a new vision for a new marriage, which both parties must subscribe to yeah. in order for us to be able to go for it. In Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there's no vision. Because if we are going back to the same old marriage that led to the same adultery. I don't, I don't even want it. I, I don't want to go back into it. And definitely, because there has been adultery, something was not right with the marriage. Mm -hmm. Either on your part, on the offended part, or on the offending part. Something yeah. was not right. Yeah. And something needs to change. Mm. So it's important that uh, we go back to a brand new marriage. Right, 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 right. Amazing. Amazing. So how do you create this vision for a brand new marriage? Yeah, so I think that you may have to sit down and find out the cause of the adultery. Mm -hmm. And create a culture in the marriage culture marital culture yeah you create a culture in the marriage that blocks that thing from happening mm -hmm. again so let's say if the adultery was uh, was committed because of um what could be what one person, inadequate sex lack of supply <laughs> in, inadequate so supply if the, adult, if the adultery was committed because of inadequate sex for instance mm -hmm. like pastor Derek likes to say mm -hmm. then you have to create a marital culture where there is regular sex yeah so well, we when, now we're going to have a lot of sex. So when there is adultery, find out the cause of the adultery and create a culture that beats that um, mm -hmm. cause of adultery mm -hmm. so that it will not happen again. All right. Okay. Okay. Another thing I believe can help a marriage uh, to be restored after uh, infidelity is that uh, there must be a genuine willingness to communicate clearly and openly about every detail that may help to understand the situation. And to restore confidence. Sometimes there are reasons why adultery happens. And after it has happened, we just keep quiet. We, we it's like nobody's ready to talk about it. The offended party is too offended to listen to anything. The offender is also too sensitive to divulge information. Do you think this helps if we just keep quiet and, and be able to see, okay, it's okay, I know he's done it, that's fine. Or is it important that we come clean and talk and we talk, talk, open up and just yeah. talk? All the things that could have led to the thing, uh, uh, how I felt about you doing this, and everything. It, it, does it help? Yeah, it helps. Talk. Talking is important. Even mm. the Lord says that, come and let us reason together. Mm. So it's important. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of couples do not talk. Mm -hmm. Let's say if a man commits adultery, mm -hmm. if a man commits adultery, out of pride. Why are you saying if a man commits adultery? Because Why not a woman commit adultery? Usually it's the men who commit adultery. Uh -huh. Yes. So you've never heard a woman commit adultery? Women do, but I said usually. Usually. Usually okay. it's a man who commits adultery. Okay. So, I mean, if you come and come and talk about it, mm -hmm. okay, this is what led me to commit this adultery. But mm -hmm. sometimes out of pride, out mm -hmm. of arrogance, they may not want to say anything. Mm -hmm. And then the offended party may not also want to bring out, they, they may not want to say how they feel, thinking that it might make you think they are, they are not strong within themselves, yeah. that they are weak, or they are so desperate for you, or they need you, mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. But it's important that we talk. Mm -hmm. This is how I felt when you did that. Mm -hmm. And this is what I don't want to happen. So please, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have committed adultery. It doesn't please God. That is not what God wants us to do. It is mm -hmm. not good for the marriage. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about it, and let's see what we can do mm -hmm. to ensure that this thing doesn't happen again. Right. Because when adultery takes place mm -hmm. and it is not properly dealt with, mm -hmm. there's a likelihood that it will happen again. Mm -hmm. 
It has mm. to be dealt with properly mm. so that it doesn't happen again. Right, right. And for it to be dealt with properly, communication is extremely important. Yeah. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to openly come out and we need to uh, 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 be, be clean. We shouldn't lie. About, we shouldn't hide things. We shouldn't. Pastor, you know that some, but some people will lie because mm-hmm. they know that if they actually reveal the truth, mm-hmm. probably they'll be killed. If they say what led to the adultery and how it's happening, all but then if you don't give the truth, yes, how will thing. we get a restoration? You have to talk. You have to talk. But for the fear of all those things, they may not want to talk. So that's please le- learn this. When these things are happening, don't go quiet over it because that's if you genuinely want a solution. Unless if you just want to carry on going around in circles, committing adultery, coming back, committing adultery, but one day, one day you will get some consequences that you don't like. So the right way is not to keep quiet, but is to boldly and openly communicate about everything that has happened so that you can find tangible solutions, so that you can have... um, uh, closure. You can have that healing and the closure to take place. For that to take place, there's got to be a lot of open communication a lot of open communication all right okay 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 all right what else can we do what else can we do uh, all right so so we've said that you have to talk and mm-hmm. then also there must be the willingness to communicate clearly we mm-hmm. said that mm-hmm. you also have to revisit the reasons why you chose your partner above all yeah time. when adult, like i said when adultery happens it's mm-hmm. like there has been a wound, mm-hmm. there has been a head somewhere. Mm-hmm. So there should be a reason why you will want to stay in the marriage yeah. after that adultery has mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. And one way is to really revisit the reasons why you chose your partner yeah. above all others. Mm-hmm. Because definitely before you went into the marriage, mm-hmm. I believe there were other people you saw. Yeah. But then you decided this is the person I'm choosing, this mm-hmm. is the person I'm going, mm-hmm. I'm going with. Mm-hmm. So if even there has been a, a, a dent in the marriage or something mm-hmm. like that, still go back to why did I choose this person? Yeah. Why did I marry this person so that you can have a reason why you want the marriage back and stay in the yeah, marriage. Because obviously we married because of certain qualities that I've seen in in, 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 in my spouse, right? You you look at these things, you, you look at life, this is where I want to go with my life, and this is the person who can help me get there. Yeah. I knew I was going to go into ministry. I needed a woman who is willing and able to stand with a man of God going to ministry, somebody who is passionate about ministry, somebody who loves the Lord herself, somebody who is uh, uh, committed to the things of God, somebody who likes to pray, somebody who likes to study the word, someone who likes to sacrifice for the things of God. I look for all these qualities, and by the leadings of God, I chose you. So God forbid, but if anything like that has happened, for me, for us to be able to go on, I have to go back and revisit. Why did I even marry this woman in the first place? Why did I even marry this man in the first place? Because if there was no reason why I married them, then when the storms come, we will easily give up the marriage. We will let it go. But if I know that I prayerfully and carefully chose this person to suit a particular need in my life, in order for my life to go well, that even if the storms have come, we will still be able to get together and say, listen, the storms have come, but I still need you for this project, for this yeah. operation. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yes, I might have gone to, to, to mess up, but I can't do without you. I still need your support. I still need everything from you. So please, can you forgive me for this and that has happened so that we can move on? But when you don't have any such thing, those people who just marry because she has big buttocks or marry because uh, uh, she's beautiful and all that, yeah, it's a good reason to marry, but it's not enough. Yeah. Because then if you need, meet somebody who seems more beautiful, if you committed a fornication with the other party who seems more beautiful than this one, then there is a likelihood that you will say, hey, it doesn't matter if you will not forgive, forget. Let me just carry on with this other person. So it is important to marry with vision. Don't just marry because of sex. Don't just marry because she's a woman or because he's a man. Have clear vision so that when the storms come like this, you can go back, you can revisit the 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 the, the the, 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 the vision and see is this person still meeting all these needs these are the reasons why i married this person and then you can stand on that to fight for a restoration right i mean i want to read a few but when we okay. were talking about the communication christiana said that mm-hmm. if you can't talk about it it's better mm-hmm. to divorce yeah yeah because it. it's likely to happen again it's likely to happen it's again. likely to happen again. and comfort is saying forgiveness is better mm-hmm. now david is also saying that if the husband is into quotes only wearing a pair of trousers with nothing inside mm-hmm. the adulterous wife that the wife adulterous life may not stop 
Mm -hmm. Unless God heals and restores the man's bedroom. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, and then Blond is saying, I agree because you might do it again. Yeah. Hello, hybrid greetings. Hello, Jaladem greetings. Hello, everybody. Tina is saying that coming clean after cheating is the best thing to do towards restoration. Yeah. Denying means the person has intentions to of do it going again. back to Yeah, and you know that once you tell your spouse that, look, I have committed adultery, mm -hmm. you, you, some way, some way, lock yourself from going to do it again. Yeah. Because you wouldn't want to go back and say that, look, I have done it again. Mm -hmm. You will look very silly. Yeah. So in order to prevent, that is why it is so important to confess some of these things, to confess adultery to your husband or wife, say mm -hmm. that, this is what I have done. Mm -hmm. So that the, the likelihood of you going back mm -hmm. is not there. It becomes yeah. very difficult for mm -hmm. you to go back. You don't want to be going back telling your wife or your husband, I've committed adultery, I've committed adultery several times. <laughs> That is, that is very, 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 very true. All right, okay. Another thing that I believe helps in re the restoration of marriage after adultery is if you can take time away from your normal routines and go away for a time of deep introspection and bonding. If you can take leave, take time off work, take one week or two weeks, go to a different country, go to a different town, go to some hotel, go to some place. Just move away from the normal routine so that you can clear your head. You can clear your head and really look into each other, look at each other, really talk properly and deeply without any distractions or, or distractions. Because one thing I've seen is that sometimes these things happen and the couple just carry on with their normal, they're still going to work, they're still going through a things like that and most of the times when this happens they are not able to restore the marriage exactly. over and over it becomes yeah. difficult because they, they are not focusing on their problem the problem is still hanging whilst they they, they have divided attention they are looking at other things whilst at the same time trying to solve the problem and it doesn't help like that yeah. just like when you fall sick serious and you go to hospital they admit you so that you can stay away from all other activity and focus on your healing. When adultery takes place in marriage, see it as a major disease that has taken place in a marriage. And you need to cut off everything and everyone so that the two of you can go somewhere and actually heal. Yeah. And actually heal. It's very, very important. But you know, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, going somewhere mm -hmm. to bond together is not our kind of thing. Yeah. Especially from where we come from. It's yeah. seen, sometimes it's seen as ways. We are looking for money. What do you mean by taking a holiday? And go? But it's one of the beautiful things to do. Even when the, even when adultery has not taken place, mm -hmm. every now and then, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife need to go away. Just the two of them. Yeah. For and a few to days. bond just... with each other. No external influences. Just the two of you. I mm. mean, it's, you are not going to be able to have sex 24-7. That's all we're talking about. We're talking about getting uh, it's not all about sex. It's yeah. about bonding, it's about the talking, the kind of resetting your together, systems. Planning together, praying together, learning about each other the more, and all those things. Because how many years have you been married? I always learn something new about you. Really? Every, every now and then, every time we go out, we learn something new. Yeah. Every time we go away, I learn something new. Amazing. So it's important that you spend time, especially mm -hmm. after an adultery has taken place in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Forget about the wealth, forget about job, money, because life is not all about money and mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. And go away with your spouse somewhere and just bond, mm -hmm. just get to talk about everything you want to talk about. Cry if you want to cry, mm -hmm. pray if you want to pray, whatever. But it's just the two of you. Those intimate moments mm. where there's nothing stopping you mm. it's so important mm. it's so mm. important and it mm. has to be done mm. amazing 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 yeah so yeah. As, as we as we are going on mm. let's add one more mm. so take time away and honestly consider the push factors mm. what push the offender away from the spouse to mm. another person mm. what is it that caused me to commit the adultery yeah what are things that drove me away, away. from my yeah. spouse yeah. into the arms of another person the push factor so what are some of these push factors what are the things that a woman can do to drive her husband away into another man's arms? Oh, yes. what are the things a man can do yeah. can drive his wife away into into another woman's arms. Consider the push factors. Yeah. What are the things? Because most of the time, there are things that drive or that push us away mm -hmm. into other people's arms. And they were all, they were all the causes of adultery we talked about. Yeah. It could be, I mean, there's a wide range of them. Mm -hmm. So many things. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle, habits, offenses, unforgiveness, 
Sometimes curiosity has an end. Curiosity. That would be a pull factor. <laughs> so the but things I told the, the thing away. that your spouse can do to, to push, push you away, away to commit adultery. So, so many of them like this. Do we acknowledge that sometimes adultery happens because one spouse did something that pushed their spouse into the arms of their yeah, 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 Pastor. So okay. I mean, we fully agree to that. Mm -hmm. And there are several things. For instance, you have a, you are a very disrespectful wife. Mm -hmm. You always disrespect your husband. You talk to your husband anyway. Mm -hmm. You don't acknowledge him as a man of the house. You insult your husband mm -hmm. and all those things. And probably he's working with the, this lady mm -hmm. who always makes him feel respected. Yeah. And I've come, I say this all the time. Mm -hmm. A man's greatest need is not sex. They can always get sex somewhere. Mm -hmm. A man's greatest need is respect. Mm. You need to learn to respect the man you are married. How do you respect the man? When you you are respect the, man, the way you talk to your husband. Mm -hmm. How do you talk to your husband? You have to talk to your husband respectfully. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, "Some way, some he is your Lord," mm -hmm. and that is what Sarah did in the Bible. First Peter says that we should, we should, I mean, talk to our husbands or uh, emulate the behavior of Sarah mm -hmm. in calling her husband mm -hmm. Abraham, my Lord. Yeah. And if somebody is your Lord, mm -hmm. you are not. You are going to give the person a particular. He, he, I, mean, I didn't yeah. understand the mommy when when growing up my mother always used to call my dad mirror like my lord my lord yeah. it, it, it sounded so but this generation do you expect a, 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 a lady of today to call her husband my yeah, lord we have to. okay our, our loved ones are their friends and loved ones how many of you are willing to call your husband my lord yes and you are listening many of you are listening the 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 Potential things listen. that, that oh, we listen. used to push. Okay. What we used to push our spouses into other people's arms. I can see you people listing them. That's very good. Give us some more. Give us some more. Nanaya, it's good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, All right. Listen. Okay. So yes. Habitual line. Habitual line. Hey, if your husband is lying, can you can he move you to another person? It depends, on, because it depends on the, the type of lie okay. that is lying. If okay. he's not very honest and he's telling you something every now and then. All right, okay. So, so yeah, have you finished? Oh, public it? insults. So, Janet is saying public, public insults. insults. When you okay. went, oh, a Ravna has, a Ravna has done it. This generation, Bay. Oh, yeah, she yeah. said that we call her husband's the wife's Bay. Bay. And fresh tilapia. I've been saying that one. Not even grilled one. Fresh tilapia. Fresh, fresh Bay. tilapia. Love. Bay. Huh? You see, we, we, we have, we have, we have, how do I call it? Is it development or? It's like you know, I want it in English. Um, we we become too enlightened, enlightened that it's hurting us. Yeah. Because these days it's not easy for you to see a woman calling her husband my lord. Yeah. But I mean, respect is extremely it's, important. It's important. Mariama is saying she agrees with me, but she thinks it has to be a two-way thing. Respect has to be mutual. Yes, respect has to be mutual, and yes. The wife has to respect her husband. Yeah. My answer to the Foka is if you don't bat, it will lead somebody to commit adultery. Yeah, I saw wife. with you. Maybe I'm not saying saying and not wife. wife. And then Nanaya is saying insults. Insults, yes. is saying not keeping to their promises. Hey, and then Francisca okay. is saying constantly giving attention to other men or women. So that one is like, like uh, protest. Fornication. You are always giving attention to somebody else. So me too, I'm also going to give myself to somebody else. Yeah. Hmm, okay. That, that's a point. That's a point. Please share. Please share, please invite friends and loved ones. Let us carry on. All right. Okay. So these these are some of the things that push factors you have to consider. So you have to look back and see these are the things, or what are the things that I did to push him away? What are the things I did to push her away so that you know how to consider and to change them in order to bring a restoration? And also. If we have said that there must be honesty in 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 uh, communicating, then is it also right that the person who went to commit the adultery can also come and say that these are the things you did that drove me away. These are the things that happened that drove me away into the other person's arms. Is it okay for us to say? Yes, it is. Can I just ask that, Leticia? I learned so many things. You know, the location is coded. And the learning is coded as well. <laughs> she, she was on the broadcast. She said, what, did, what do you think did I learn about you? Ah, uh, oh, okay. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, so I asked the question. Mm -hmm. Can the offended part, will it be acceptable if the offended, I mean the offender, the adulterer, 
He's able to say that it's because you don't give me enough sex. That's why I went out to get it from somebody else. Or because your food is not nice. It doesn't taste nice. And I've complained and complained and complained. And you haven't made any effort to cook well. And this lady started giving me good food. And that is what drew me into it. Is it okay for them to come out and give these excuses? Or they just have to keep quiet when it comes to that one? Will it hurt the offended party yes. twice? Um, that's a difficult But then if they don't come out with the truth to then it will never be known and the mistake could be repeated yeah, and, in and, the future. Yes, and the truth is not always that easy to swallow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes truth can be very bitter. Mm -hmm. But if you want the good of the marriage, then I think that to a large extent it should come out. We should be ready to speak that truth. Ready to speak. Now, Rana is saying that no one man, the mouth is painful like a, a binero pepe. <laughs> he will insult you for you to doubt your existence on earth. And honestly, saying yes, honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Nancy, I don't speak French. I don't understand what is it French or something. I don't understand what you say you're reading. <laughs> no, now you are not late. Um, men misuse their men has men have misused the respect they used to give our mothers. Mm. That is why women change their mind of giving them respect. But then when they change their mind, has it helped in any way? I don't think so. I don't think so. So you just have to know the type of man you are married to. But I think that respect has always Held a marriage yeah. where there is respect. Yeah. It has always held a marriage. It, disrespect <laughs> has never uh, been a solution. Disrespect has never held uh, any marriage. The, uh, Cornelia is saying that pastors, some men are going to cheat. Even if you offer your head for them, they will still cheat. That is quite a sad one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people have that problem. Some people are yeah, okay, serial. So cheaters, habitual cheaters. cheaters or cheats. Cheats. Okay. So, Pastor, let's say if you if you happen to find um, yourself in a marriage with somebody who is a habitual cheat, what do you do? That no matter, like Cornelia is saying, no matter what you do to, for them, mm -hmm. they will still go and cheat. Uh, that, is, that is a big do one. You, do you have the right to walk away from the marriage? Yeah, for, for the sake of your health. Okay. Because now a habitual cheat is likely to go and pick some disease and bring to you one day. Because they are sleeping here, they are sleeping there. We, we're not talking about, oh, it's happened once or even twice. But you know that this person has cheated with Ama, Efua, Adwa, Ya, Upeku. Like, it's like they, they cheat with everybody. They, such a person needs deliverance. Such a person needs deliverance. So they need God to, to set them free. And if they cannot be set free, and if they, or they need to go through some counseling to really change them, if their Christian life is not a strong one, they need to be drawn to Christ when their Christian life is very solid so that they can overcome these things. But if these things are not happening, then uh, 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 I think it's safe to walk away because you could endanger your own life. I ship him, apologize for his mistake. If he decides to do it, he will. Yeah, yeah. So for that one, that's not what we're talking about now. Oh. We're talking about those who are, I mean, those who genuinely went out because of a reason mm -hmm. but what she's talking about here is the exceptional there are some people no matter what you do to them they will cheat that one you can't kill yourself for them yeah then you have to walk away for your own safety and mariama is saying in our african culture they say when a man lies to you about commi committing adultery it means he loves you nah, that's not any, true. i don't want my husband lying to me about committing adultery mm. at all that is not love to me at mm. all mm. Okay, habitual, like Francisca could be saying, habitual cheating should be cheating be tolerated. Okay. What we are talking about here is maybe a one off, a maximum twice off. But if it is a lifestyle, then this thing we are talking about is not going to work. It needs a different approach altogether. Yeah. It needs a different approach completely altogether. All right, so, so please share. If you haven't shared it, please share it for us and uh, let us, let us uh, keep uh, pressing on clip. Uh, keep keep sharing it. Keep sharing it. All right. Okay. So, okay. Pastor, what else? What are some of the things that we can do to restore adultery? Yeah. yeah the, another thing we can do is to honestly consider the pool factors. What about the other party drew you close to themselves? Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can learn from it? Can my spouse also start doing it? Maybe you have a wife who doesn't dress well. Mm -hmm. You are spoken to her in every way. She tells you that maybe for religious religion, spiritual reason, her face has to be dry. She ha can keep her hair nice, she can't make herself a, 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 a presentable, right? She just, when you see her, you feel like you have met your mother or your grandmother. <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, let's face facts. 
<laughs> you are laughing. <laughs> no, let's face facts. Men, right? Men are attracted by what we see. So if you are my wife, like you, you are not extravagant. You are not somebody who is into fashion. And even if you wear, I would have abandoned you long ago. Because I don't like women who paint their face all red, blue, green, long fingernails, excessive hair. I don't like that. You don't have you don't have hair and nail extensions. No cuteness, nothing. I've had nail extensions once. Once, and even that I rebuked you for it. On, my on your way, you, I rebuked you when I came down. I saw you had nail extensions. I said, "What is this? I don't like it. Remove them." He said, "The family forced it on you." Yeah. And right after the wedding, it was removed, and you've never done it again. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is this is us, mm -hmm. right? I don't want anything extravagant. But at least, my sister, I want you to look a little presentable to me. Yeah. Your hair must look decent. Your face must look decent. Your 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 hygiene and your appearance must look decent. Mm -hmm. But maybe there is a wife you don't like to dress well. You always dress in a way that your husband has complained. He said, "I don't like you looking like this." You too. That is how you want to dress. Mm -hmm. my, in my place of work, there's another lady. She dresses decently, modestly, just the same way I want my wife to dress. I see this woman is in my bedroom when I'm talking to my wife. I see she hear, she hears what I tell my wife. She dresses modestly, she dresses decently, she dresses attractively all the time. And so when I go to work and I see her, I keep looking at her, I keep looking at her, and then that possibly drew me close to her. Okay, so we have these pool factors that are real. Yeah. Sometimes the way you talk to your husband, you just took your husband, boom, 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 boom. But there's this other lady who, the way she even talks slowly, nicely. Look at the way I talk. I talk ba -ba 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 like this when I'm... But I don't want a woman who talks the same way. <laughs> like if on this broadcast, you also talk like the way I talk. We can't, we can't flow. You talk slowly, you talk so I'm always begging you, raise your voice a little. Really, raise your... Because you're a pumped guy. <laughs> raise your voice a little. But you cannot be screaming whilst I'm also screaming. <laughs> Okay, I like a lady who talks softly. I like a lady who talks nicely. So if you were not talking like that, and possibly I met a lady who talks like that, it could attract me. It could attract me. So there are genuine pool factors. There are things we see about other... I'm talking as a man. There are things we see about other women that we wish that our wives had them. And if you are not strong, those things can pull you to that person, you start liking the person, liking the person, and that liking can eventually lead to something. There are a few comments I want to read Okay. Here. So Donna is saying that if you are married and mm -hmm. your wife is pregnant in hospital for six months, mm -hmm. the husband went out to have an affair because he could not wait for his wife. Is that wrong? That is wrong. That is wrong because the pregnancy is not the woman's fault. It is our making. So if we have both decided to make a baby, and the baby is demanding that my wife stays in the hospital for six months. We, we should see it as we are both staying in the hospital for six months. Okay? So it's not her fault. And we are both doing this thing together. You must sacrifice. If you go off whilst your wife is staying in the hospital for your sake, for six months, and you go off, I mean, it's wickedness. Ramna is saying, Daddy, I feel the needs of most men are insatiable. Economics. Yeah. <laughs> and... Christina is saying that men should also take care of themselves to look good for their wives. Brush your yeah. teeth and take care of your armpits. Exactly. So Ravna is saying that most men of today want sexy and hot. And then Vicky is saying, I'm beaten by the nagging term. Mm -hmm. It always comes for habitual cheese because while this incident is still sinking, mm -hmm. you are trying to forgive and let it pass. Another comes. The series are closed and continue to cry for change is termed as nagging. No, that's no nagging. My sister, that was her name. That is not nagging. Vicky. Vicky, that is no nagging. You, you have the right to a husband who is faithful. You have the right to a faithful husband. So he keeps cheating. You keep talking about it. He keeps cheating, and he calls it nagging. That's no nagging. He's, he's literally endangering your life, both spiritually and physically. He's endangering your life. So that is no nagging at all. You have every reason and every right to talk until there is change. That is not termed as nagging. So please carry on and keep on demanding for what then, is your okay, right. Francisca is saying that in order to avoid some of these things, before mm. you marry someone, mm -hmm. make sure the way they dress, etc., is mm -hmm. the kind you want. Don't marry them and later want to change them by force. That is right. But mommy, change also happens sometimes inside the marriage. Mm -hmm. I have seen instances where the woman you married 
was dressing in one way that you liked, mm -hmm. and you looked at that and you married them. Then after you've married them, they say they've caught a new revelation, they've, come, had, they've had a new dream or something, and all of a sudden, they have changed the way they dress, and the way they dress doesn't appeal to you anymore. Mm -hmm. This things happen. Yeah. This things happen. I know somebody, I know somebody, she to dress this, and all of a sudden, she's cut off all her hair, changed all her dressing, wearing skin things. Like, if you ask guys, like, hey, uh, yes, uh, like, if, if I, if I, Dress the way I used to dress. I'm going to have it's not like I'm going to hell. It's not like they used to dress bad. I'm talking about no dangerous sexually explicit dressing, but like no, no, not even a dot of lipstick or lip shine, no lip gloss, dry breaking mouth. It's like it's like bang, bang, like real, real. When you meet her, you see that you have met your brother, and yes, she's a lady, but that's not how she used to be at the beginning. Okay, so. These things happen, and it's like, no, when I met you, you were not like this. Mm. And sometimes these things can create problems in a marriage. Yeah. Then you, 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 you no longer, some even go to the extent of saying that they don't even want to use deodorant anymore. Yeah. And so you get close to them and my sister. <laughs> it's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, deodorant is not a sin. How when did deodorant become a sin? You know, yeah, it's a revelation. You've got a revelation. What are you doing to do? yourself? You need to take good care of your health. You cannot just be what I mean, personal hygiene is so important. Yeah, they've got revelation, and the revelation says that they can't put on deodorant. They can't put this. They can't put that. And now they are walking in the house, and you don't know whether she said, "How self? Whether it's your great grandmother who has come to visit? You don't. You don't get any any feeling at all." And you know, we are men. Yeah. And so please, ladies, take good care of your dressing. Don't say, if you go out, let him go. Make sure that your dressing is the way that appeals to your husband. You have that role to play in that marriage. And the men as well, like some of the ladies have said, they are also put off by your poor dressing. If, if, if you, you dress like a villager, some of us men, you wear some trousers is so big that you tighten the belt in the middle and the trouser is when they see they don't know whether it is a skirt or a slit you are wearing as a man. You put your belt in and then your shirt is so bola and your shoe is all over the place. You don't have your bath. You don't like to bath, your hair is overgrown and all that. Your wife has complained and complained and complained. Your wife wants you to put on a little perfume. No, no, no. You won't. Every time they meet you, you are full of sweat and all that. Uh, and then there is this man at work who knows how to groom himself. You know, like Mr. Godfrey. You know. Just cut there. He knows how <laughs> to cut. Train line, train. Yeah, trim his beard and do all those things. <laughs> and he comes with his uh, cologne and things. Before you realize you are attracted, women also get attracted to these things. Yeah. So you have to know who you are married to and know what attracted. And this is where extensive communication and understanding with each other comes in. We have to understand each other and know what we both like and then change ourselves to, to suit each other so that the marriage can flourish. Yeah, that, and that is the reason why we keep saying that please talk. Yeah, talk, talk to your wife, talk to your husband, talk, talk, talk. Talk about everything and about anything. So Tyler is saying that I always surprise my husband, but he has never done that for me. What should I do? Because I talk about it so many times, but there's no change coming from him at all. People are different. Okay, people are different. There are some people, there's nothing you do to them that will make them change that kind of thing. They are not givers. Some people are not givers. Some people are not, uh, uh, they, do, they don't think intelligently. They, 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 they don't, they are not excited. Some people are boring. Okay, oh. there's nothing you can say to make them change. So that's your lot. You just yeah. pray for them or trust God. And but as someone is saying, men need to smell a little. <laughs> this guy is just... <laughs> <laughs> Samuel says, who? Men don't need to if smell. If you become a woman, you will understand. If a smelly woman, a smelly man is lying on you for, and, and those are the people who don't come at you. So he, <laughs> he comes on you and he's smelling and he's on you for 30 minutes, 40 minutes before, <laughs> before he tells you are thinking. So... <laughs> No, a man must not smell. A man must not smell. A man <laughs> must must, must smell nicely and yeah. decently. It, it's good. Yeah. But it's you can good. say that this generation of men wants flat tummy and all that, but those those themselves don't even have six six pack. Yeah. And the liar I said it's not a skills, it's skills. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Julia is saying as symbol. Um yeah, and then Francis Francisca is saying baggy clothing. Yeah. Hey, Pastor Derek says yeah, yeah, we say communication is key. Communication yeah. is key. And um, you cannot stress that enough. Mm. Communication is key. Mm. You need you know we, we before we got married, Pastor, yeah. we could talk for hours. Yeah. After we got married, we still talk for hours. We yeah. never, we, yes, yesterday, what was I telling you? Yesterday was very late. We're still talking, talking. And I told Pastor Derek that if we are left to talk the whole day, we, the two of us can just... Yeah, she doesn't allow me day. to sleep at night. And we are talking. People think we are doing something, but we are not doing anything. We are just talking. And talking, and talking, and talking. Francisca is saying, I overgrown armpit, armpit hair. Pubic hair. Is pubic hair for you? <laughs> this one is armpit hair. Wait, what is pubic hair? <laughs> For you, your pubic hair is on your head. Okay, I get you. All right, okay. Question, 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 okay. Question, question, question. Um, if your husband, oops, sorry, if your husband don't know how to buy him gifts, mm -hmm. you have tried to give him signals time and again. You've been mm -hmm. married for about ten years, mm -hmm. but still it's not working. What do you do? Because gifts and surprises spice the marriage, and it's a form of appreciation. Right, that that is true. But some people are not givers. Some people are not givers, and so if your husband is not a giver, it will be a big problem. No matter the signal you give him, he sees the signal, but he doesn't see. This is why you must look at all these things before you marry. Some people are not given. Some people are wicked. If you marry such a wicked person, there's nothing you can do to make him change to start giving. He wouldn't want to give. He wouldn't want to give. And, and that becomes your lot. So please, try your best to avoid... Okay, Nanaya is saying they are all pubic hair. They are all pubic hair. Okay, thank you, Nanaya. Yeah, so they are all pubic hair. Ah, because you scared me. <laughs> you scared me. All right. Okay. 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 All right, so you have to consider the pull factors. What are the things I saw in the other party that drew me close to them? Can I talk to my wife about it? Can I talk to my husband about it? Can my husband start incorporating those things in his own life? Can my wife start incorporating those things in her own life? Is it okay for the offended party to ask the adulterer, what did you see in that person that drew you close to them that yeah. I don't have? Yes, I think so. I think that that's the very it's a very important question to ask because you want to stop that from happening again and you want to be able to meet the needs of your spouse so that they don't go asking for that need somewhere. What if what I saw is not something you can have? Like what? Like maybe what I saw in the other person. Are you sure you want me to say it? Say it. Okay. So let's say what I saw in the other person, the other person had very big breasts and you don't have big breasts. And because I've I've been with you for 20 years with small breasts, and I've always been imagining, hey, how does big breasts feel like? How will this bre big breasts look like? And I had opportunity with these watermelons. And I said, let me try how watermelon will feel like. And then you ask, you know, if I tell you the truth, I will I will <laughs> No, 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 not you that much. I mean, using the example that you gave. Yeah, because it's not, so it's not every truth you can say. It's not every truth you can say, but, but in this instance, if you think it's big breast that you want, don't go for flat breast. No, I, I thought I was okay. I met you, I loved you. But when you met me, at least you could see that I don't have watermelon. Yeah, and I loved you for it. But then, no, as we carried on, no, no, the temptation came, and I, I, I just imagined, Satan planted an idea like that. What will big breasts look like? No, no. And I went to see, and in seeing, I touched. I, I, do not, I do not agree to that. Because whatever you see in marriage, mm -hmm. whatever you whatever you see in the person you choose to marry, you take it. Mm -hmm. That is what you want. So that is not that, that is good. No, that that is cannot good. be take, taken as a pool factor. factor. No, no, no. Because, listen, you cannot have... <laughs> Cornelia is saying, I'll watermelons. Come inside. <laughs> <laughs> You cannot have everything. Mm -hmm. You cannot have everything you want, in, mm -hmm. I mean, in one person. So, definitely, mm -hmm. there's no perfect person anyway. Mm -hmm. So, there are things you get in your spouse, and mm -hmm. there are things you will not get in your spouse. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, that is where love comes in. Mm -hmm. Love overlooks all these things. Mm -hmm. And then you know that this is the person I have. Okay, I, I don't want... Um, I can't get everything in there. Mm -hmm. This is what I have. I'll be content with what I have and mm -hmm. stay with it. Yeah. Because I know that we've done a, a marriage conferences mm -hmm. where some men have come out boldly to say that, as for me, I mm -hmm. like big breasts. Yeah. You cannot go for a small breast if you're that kind of... You will fall... It's not a matter of liking. Okay, like, for example, me, I'm married to you. 
you are in doubt. Let's change the topic. Okay, let's, let's you may not have watermelons, let's, 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 but at least you have you have grapefruit. Okay, <laughs> and <laughs> you may not have watermelon, but at least you have grapefruit. Eh? And uh, and then maybe sometimes Satan may talk to me about lemon. <laughs> oh, no watermelon, lemon. That oh, how will lemon <laughs> also feel like, like or lime? Mm-hmm. And then you, and so this is where I'm saying this driving to a point mm-hmm. that this is where. You see, one of the causes that we mentioned, number one, is the fear of God, the lack of the fear of God, mm-hmm. and also backsliding. Because when you are backsliding, now these ideas can begin to come into your head. When you begin to backslide, when you begin to backslide, some of these things will begin to come into your head. And this is why you must keep your spiritual life on fire all the time. So that when these things come into your head, you'll be able to overcome them. Can I tell you that these things sometimes come into my head? Sometimes Satan suggests some of these things. But when you keep your spiritual life on fire, it keeps you alive and away. If you backslide, I'm telling you, you will you go will. looking, even nuts, you will go looking for it. <laughs> and, and, oh, yes, and it will destroy you. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> say that. Watermelons are too much sugar. No, no, no. Watermelons are healthy. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's one thing we also need to really, really be careful of. Yeah. That is the reason. Did I say that Sandra said that plastic surgery can help? Oh, can it? Okay, I didn't see that. Mm. This is the reason why. But that is extreme. I, I, I will never suggest that a woman should go and do plastic surgery in order for her to be appealing to her husband. Because a husband who cannot love you for who you are to an extent yeah. that you they will insist that you have to do plastic actual plastic surgery to change the way you look. If they find somebody else who looks better, even after a plastic surgery, they are bound to do it. So never, I would never advise any woman go and uh, 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 do any drastic change to your body just to appeal to your husband. Please, yeah, uh, the way, I use this as an example, but never look down on yourself. Whether you have big breasts or small breasts, big buttocks or small buttocks, whatever your body shape is, never look down upon yourself and never allow your husband to use it as the reason why he went out to commit adultery. Oh, no, no, it's no, never no. A, a, a tangible excuse. No, 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 I was no, only no. saying this for a joke, but it's never a tangible excuse. Nanayal says oranges have high vitamin C. Yeah, very healthy. So, and Beatrice is saying, so what's the difference between small breasts and big breasts? They are all great. That, that is the problem. In, you see, the problem is that I do not know the difference. <laughs> you don't know the difference. And sometimes it's like, should we look for the difference? Will there be any difference? You are a woman. Is there any difference? I think being, being a woman in the middle, I think is there the any difference? difference? Is just, the, just the size. The size. Yeah, just but the size. does size matter? It depends because some men are attracted. You know, if you remember, we had a marriage conference yeah. where this man said that he would never go for a woman with small breasts. Mm-hmm. He, he was going to sing when he sees a big breast. Will be. So I, I, every man and what he likes. Okay. Some men will like. I, there's a man in my school who says that for him, if you if your breasts are not this massive, forget it. Mm-hmm. There's another man who says that he likes hips. Some men like hips. Some men like breasts. Some men like hair. Whatever. So it depends on what the some men like legs. It depends on what it Yeah, but me, I like hair, legs to legs to a nice. I know you like legs. Yeah, 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 yeah nice yeah. hair. I know you like legs. That's yeah, right. you know I like legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you like legs. Yeah. So it and depends hair, on her hair, hair. Hair on the body, body too yeah. is nice. So you see, yeah. if your wife has it, but well, if your wife has it. But you know, beauty is very, very dynamic. It is, it is. Because I have met people, I've, I've met ladies who may not be endowed in the chest, but still were very, very attractive to me. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I wouldn't mind marrying this woman. Even, like somewhere. even though she may not have big breasts, but I wouldn't mind marrying this one because mm-hmm. beauty is more than just that. Beauty is more than the physical. Beauty is far, far more than the physical. No, the, yeah. the, 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 the inner beauty. Like yeah, inner, inner beauty is stronger yeah, than outer beauty. If you find a woman who hasn't got any of these things, mm-hmm. who has them in moderation, mm-hmm. but... That inner beauty, that inner peace they will, they mm-hmm. will give me. Nana, okay, Nana, yeah, it's oh, a few comments. Um, Nana is saying, you are saying something, Pastor Derek. Mm-hmm. And Francisca is saying a big no. Nana is saying, I like a hornet hawk. I like yeah, a hornet hawk. Yeah. Okay. And then someone is saying, who, who can't send you on this broadcast? <laughs> he says, please, size 
matter, pa, 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 that's men. <laughs> and Tina is saying, men who look at a woman's physical appearance are not matured. Yeah. Because women's body changes after childbirth. Yeah, things Some change. Some are better. I see myself as an example. Yeah. I say, he's asking, how do you continue to deal with a husband who spends most of the time on the phone and pay no attention with his, to, to his, his wife? wife. That, that is a very, very bad habit that many men are developing in this generation. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. We have to learn to put the phone aside and focus on each other. If we want to keep the marriage alive and well, we have to learn to uh, put the phone aside. A husband, many men, you see, it's 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 part of the uh, autistic spectrum. You, you know that. Being excessively glued to a phone and holding on to the phone all the time, it's like, Phone, 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 and not having time. It's 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 part of the aut autistic thing, and it has to be dealt with. If you need counseling, you need help. It has to be done because it's wrong. It's very very addictive. Many men are addicted to phones. It is not right at all. Yeah. So yeah, we, so we consider the pull factors, mm -hmm. and then also what they offend themselves by opening up for whether the, the things they need to open up for such a fall. Mm -hmm. you, you you have to you have to honestly uh, uh, look at what about you like this is that I talked about. Had you started backsliding mm -hmm. before you went into the adultery? What was your prayer life like? Yeah. Before you went into the adultery, what was your church attendance and your Bible study life like? Mm -hmm. What was your relationship with your wife like? Yeah. What was your attitude like? So, because sometimes it's not just that your wife did something that drove you away. Sometimes it's not like the other lady did something that affected you, but the problem is you. Yeah. Maybe you yourself, you stopped praying. You started by sliding. You, you, you started getting uh, rude. You started getting too proud. You started getting arrogant. You started getting careless. You started playing games that were wrong. You started opening your heart for demons to come in. Or well, one other thing could be that you stop taking your you started taking your mind for granted. Yeah. And that is one big thing that needs to adult. You mm -hmm. know, at the beginning or at the initial stages of the marriage, mm -hmm. you okay, this is my husband. I want I want to do everything to please him. This yeah. is my wife. I want to do everything to please him. Mm -hmm. Then as you become um what's the word as you become familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Complacency, complacency begins to set in. Began, be, begins to set in. And then you cannot be bothered about the marriage anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't pray about your marriage. Those uh, when you got married, you were praying. You were on fire praying. Mm -hmm. A few years into the marriage, you stop praying about your marriage. Yeah. You stop being putting in the extra effort yeah. to to make the marriage exciting and mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. You are just careless. Anything goes. Mm -hmm. That is also something you need to mm -hmm. check whether they are the things you are you also did. Yeah. With. So you, you have to look, look at yourself. You have to look at yourself. No matter what, you can never say that you committed adultery because of somebody else adultery may have happened your wife may have pushed you, your husband may have pushed you somebody may have attracted, attracted you but at the end of the day the responsibility is yours mm -hmm. so far as you were not raped you can never put the blame on somebody else it was your will you decided to do it and you have to own up and you have to look at your own life at that point when i did that what was my spiritual state what was my mental state what was my physical state why did i do that where was i in life that made me do that and you have to own up it gets to a point you have to own the responsibility for what happens otherwise we can never ever get a solution so you've got to learn to do that one as well all right and then we also have to understand that adultery is always deceptive. So uh, something may have pulled you. You get a pull factor. You 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 saw oh this is some sweet lady, wonderful. I I want her. You go for her, but after you go in, most of the times you will find out that things were not as they seemed to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, some people tell people don't tell the truth. No. But almost everybody who has gone away from their wives or their husbands to do something, later they find out that that thing as well, it was not like I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and is it important that we mention some of these things too? So at least it serves as a reminder for us for when we are tempted next time. You see, that listen, the last time I was tempted, this girl looked so beautiful until when I went there, I realized that she's not even neat. She doesn't even know how to keep herself clean, but she doesn't know how to cook. She 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 wets the bed or she's something. All these things are, oh yeah. Some of these ladies are walking in our churches nicely, walking in our workplaces nicely. But if you get close, after you've been attracted and you get close mm -hmm. to them, then you begin to see that 
things are not the same like like they used to yeah. how does that help it helps because it stops you from going in the next time you don't want a bad experience again you've had a bad experience um once you don't want to go in and find something okay and it, if if you are able to come out with that and convince yourself mm. it stops you from going in again mm. because you know after all there's nothing out there there's nothing out because there. a lot of the time mommy people people what we see on the outside especially when it comes to social media how you see somebody is it when you see somebody's nice photo on facebook you cannot smell the person no you cannot even hear their voice there's so much you will not see you may only see the photo from the stomach okay you don't know that the leg is like that okay you only see the top and you get attracted but after you've gone in then you begin to see the whole picture it's like they say when you are far from a forest you see it as just one but when you enter the forest then you see that the trees are individual there are gaps between them so that is how adultery is like when you are far away from the your object of enticement that person looks perfect it's like there's nothing wrong this person can never make any mistake they don't do anything wrong but many men mommy have gone away from their wives and gone into some women and the way they have been treated the rudeness the insults the abuse they were with their wife and their wife will, will call them my lord and honor them and now they are into this kind of thing and this small girl this side chick is ordering them about insulting and foolish man you said you come at eight look at the time you're arriving you go to the market buy me this you pass by the roadside and buy me shaki before you get home little girls ordering men about so i think that when you come to your senses you've got to come to your point when you wake up and say hmm Look at all the respect I had. I thought this girl was very attractive, but look at how she was treating me. Look at the insults I was getting. Yeah. Look at oh, my wife would be cooking decent food for me at home. When I picked up this girl, we she never cooked. It always had to be in one restaurant after the other. Your health began to change. Your blood pressure began to go up because you started eating monounsaturated and all sort of crazy things from the uh, MSGs and things from from from, from uh, the restaurants and all that instead of eating quality food from home okay so all these things are that we have to revisit them we have to go back and look at what it actually cost us beyond the facade of of, of the attraction and, and and see how best we can use that to help us not to go back into these uh, uh problems or these issues anymore yeah <laughs> yeah, we have all sorts. <laughs> Those who drew, she looks very nice with her makeup. Except by she lies in bed and she will drew. The pillow is always wet and and, and smelling. Some of, some of them will snow until the house is shaking. Some of them will wee wee. And these are all natural things. And and and, and sometimes uh, you have your own wife, and your own wife may have one fault or the other. And so that you over exaggerate your wife's fault, and then you think that that lady out there is so perfect, and then you go pick it, and you realize your wife was snoring, but the woman you've gone to pick is bedwetting, and you see that that one is worse. I mean, mommy says something here, and I really like it. She said mm. they, they are empty barrels, mm. nice from far, yeah, but far from nice. Oh, that's that's a powerful statement. That's a very that's powerful, a powerful statement. statement. Nice from far. nice from far, but far from nice when that's you get close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a full yeah. book. Yeah. That is a full book. <laughs> Someone says chai. I don't even know. Oh, right. says that's karma. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's not always busy out there. Yeah, please share. Please share the broadcast for us. Please share. Let's let's reach 200 shares. Let's, everybody, so let's share. Shares. No, let's share it. Let's share it. Let's invite more friends. We know we came late today. The setting is different well, and everything, but help us as well, please. Help right. us I, a little, yeah. I think another um, factor that can restore the a marriage when adultery is adultery has happened mm -hmm. is to look at all you stand to lose if the marriage breaks down. Yeah. What do you stand? To? Sometimes there are years. Mm -hmm. You have built this marriage for years, ten mm -hmm. years, fifteen years, yeah. twenty years, and then look at all. Oh, am I going to throw all that away? Yeah. Twenty because, years because of, of your adultery. life. Yeah. Am I going to just let go of all these years? Mm. All the all the things we've done together the investments the projects the children the experiences mm -hmm. and all these things i'm not just going to let go of it because i don't you are taking place mm -hmm. list them child custody yeah who's going to keep the children and, and and you even have to look at what is the effect going to be on the children yeah 
How are the children going to feel? Do you know that every time there's been adultery, it affects the children, it affects their academic progress, it affects their psychological makeup, it affects their confidence, it affects their future relationships, it affects so many things. Some of these children end up drifting into crime. If they are boys, they join gangs. If they are girls, they start easily giving themselves up to other men because they are looking for that love that they should have had from the dad at home and all that. So the effect it's going to have on the children alone. And then child custody, who's going to keep the children? And if if one is keeping the children, do do we have, or does the other party have the right, the, the right to visit the children at what point and all that? The stress these things can give. One parent gets their children and you are not sure whether they are going to kill their children because sometimes when divorce comes, one offended party is able to have, to harm their children to spite you. We have seen it in the news a few yeah, times yeah. where a marriage is breaking up yeah. and the husband has the custody of the children this weekend and he has decided he's going to kill yeah. their children so that we both lose them. Can you imagine? All these dangers are there. What are the things you stand to lose if you allow the marriage to collapse? What do you stand to lose? What are the dangers? What is the cost? How is it going to affect you in the end should the marriage fail? You have to think about these things. You don't just sit down and think, oh, uh, yeah, I'm offended. He's, he's committed fornication or adultery. So that is it. Uh, if, if, if the marriage breaks, let it break. I'm tired. You have to count the cost. Jesus says that anyone who wants to build a house should first sit down and count the cost, whether he has what it takes to build it before he starts. Otherwise, you may insist, I don't want the marriage anymore. Then six months down the line, you know people who's, who go for divorce and then one year after the divorce, they are sleeping together all the time. Oh. Do you remember there was a story like that? Yeah. You heard the story. They had divorced, but every now it wasn't even up to one year, a few months. They yeah. Were just, they were just. They are sleeping. always coming back to sleep together. Mm. They sleep here and they don't want anybody to know. No, because right. they have officially yeah, divorced. They have officially divorced. Like, I'm sure <laughs> people told them, don't do it, don't do it. After they've done it, they've gone and they realize, man, we still need each other. But how are we going to go about this? And so they sneak out and they meet in places and they sleep. And then they carry them and sleep. They were divorced, but. A few months after the divorce, the woman got pregnant for the man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I knew of that story too. Yeah. After the divorce. <laughs> yeah, they were divorced, and after the divorce, the woman got pregnant for the man. For the same man, she was. When they were divorcing, there was no pregnancy. But months into months, the divorce, yes. or years into the divorce, the divorced wife got pregnant for, for the divorced divorce husband. <laughs> They didn't count the cost. <laughs> they didn't count the cost. So don't be in a hurry to divorce. Do not be in a hurry to divorce. Divorce is not a joke. It's not an easy thing. The consequences are not just immediate. There are the immediate consequences, there are the long-term consequences, and there are the far-reaching consequences that you can never even think of. So do not rush into a divorce. No matter how tangible you think your point is, no matter how hurt you are, give it time to heal. Give yourself time to heal before you jump into a divorce. Don't rush into it because the consequences can be more than what you bargain for. List the cost that you are getting yourself into, the effects on the children, the custody on the children, your own dignity and your own respect, the financial cost mm -hmm. of raising the children alone or with each other. You see, when family are together the cost is less the bible says that two are better than one and they have a better reward for their labor okay right now the two of us we live in the same house we pay the same rent we lie on the same bed when i am going into hotels for waiting for example i book the hotel and the price they are charging they ask is it one person or two persons i say one person the price is same. When I say two persons, it's the same price because we are both going to lie on the same thing. But if I book one room and you book a different room separately, the price is going to double. And this is one thing divorce does. You live separately, I live separately, and you have to pay your bills, I pay my bills, pay for your water, pay for your kids. If we switch on the light, that same light can take care of the two of us in the same room. But if we are living in separate houses, I have to switch on my light and use you switch on your light. So divorce ends up making you poorer. You end up spending more on life, okay? We are not saying that divorce must never happen. We know that under some circumstances, eventually it may happen. But don't take it lightly. Don't jump into it. 
with the flimsiest excuse, especially when your party is sorry. Do not rush into a divorce. Don't rush at all into a divorce because the consequences can be a little bit disturbing. Make sure that you take time to count the cost before you go into it. Take your time and count the cost before you go into it so that um, so that uh, you will, you will uh, uh, not put yourself into something that you regret later. You don't want to regret later. You don't want, you see, have you considered the sleepless nights? Have you considered the lonely nights? The Bible also says that when two lie together, they keep warm. I, I can't I count the number of times I've drawn closer to you and in order to feel because <laughs> you have a warmer body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every time I want to get close and feel a little. And if I have to be alone all the time, or you also have to be alone, it's it's not the best, okay? It's not the best. The lonely nights, being alone in the night, when you are sick in the night, that if you had your partner there, they could help, they could support, they could boil some water, put some uh, raw, raw or liniment or something on your body, and you are not going to get all these things. So, so that, you see, one thing that makes us easily choose divorce, right, is that, mommy, we don't appreciate what we do for each other easily. Yeah. We take it for granted. We take a lot of what we do for each other for granted. So we don't see that we are going to lose out until the person is actually out of our lives. Mm -hmm. And then we realize, oh, if this one was here, you would have done it for me. When this one was here, he was doing this for me. Even though he was bad in this aspect, he was also good in this aspect. No human being is completely evil. Mm -hmm. No human being is completely bad. Even Hitler had his lovers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even Hitler had a wife. Hitler had a wife. And his wife saw him as a very loving man. <laughs> to the extent that when Hitler killed himself, she also killed herself. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know his wife killed him. Yeah. Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler had a wife who loved him and who thought that he was a very loving husband. Wow. So in this world, everybody, no matter how evil they seem, they may have some good signs. Yeah. To themselves, okay. and I'm not by any means trying to say that Hitler was a good man, he was an evil beast. That's no, I'm never trying to say that he was a good man. But please reconsider, don't be quick. What we are trying to say is that even if you feel so hurt, even if you feel so offended, that you don't think that you can easily forgive, give yourself time, don't be quick to draw the curtain that. We are divorcing. Give yourself time to see if you can heal. Give yourself at least a few years, at least a year or two, to see if you can heal. Unless you've given that time and you know that you still cannot heal, then maybe you can offer divorce. But within weeks, within months, don't offer divorce because healing can take place. Yeah. And sometimes you realize that you still love the person, but you have gone ahead of yourself and pushed for divorce. So you have to be careful you have to be careful in that respect. Right. Before we move on, I want to talk about our um, new group, which makes you a supporter. Yeah. If you look on the screen, you will see a green button with a love heart. Mm -hmm. If you click on it, you become a supporter. And we are encouraging as many of you as can because there are special benefits for you. We want to grow this ministry. So mm -hmm. if you want to, please click on the button and be a supporter. Thank you. Uh, oh, there's a green button. Yeah, with a love heart. Okay, a uh, green button with a love heart. That is beside a like. So yeah. if you want to support us with how much? Is it three pound? Fifty. Three pound fifty. Facebook suggested this and we thought it was a good thing. So anybody who wants to support us three months and uh, three pounds fifty a month, that's that's chicken. It's it's not it's not going to break your bank account, okay? <laughs> but it will help us. Like you so see that do all, all these changes we are trying to do, yeah. it, it, it it costs money, okay? It costs money. Subscription to StreamYard and all this, it costs money. So it will help us foot some of the bill so that we can always come before you and uh, uh, feed you with this thing. So there's a button. If you can click on it, click on it and then support us with £3.50. It's, it's not compulsory. It's, it doesn't mean that we will not serve you if you don't do it. We've been doing it without that. So if the Lord leads you, do so. But those who do that will have special treats as well. We have special one-to-one -one sessions, special private sessions that we'll be doing with you. Special sessions that we'll be doing with you if you are able, those who do that will be doing private sessions. You can have 
direct uh, time of counseling as well. You can have access directly to us. Now, the, the, with the growth of this ministry, the number of calls we are getting and the number of requests for counseling, we as the time goes on, I don't think that we'll have time to commit to everyone the way we are doing. And eventually, it will be those who support us that will be able to have that time for them. We may not be able to counsel everyone. They come in in hundreds. We, we can't. But at least if you are supporting us, it will help us also to be able to allocate a little time for you as well. We are not charging. It's just a little support. Okay. okay so, so God is, bless you. Tana is asking a person, so like yeah. what you are saying, that they were married before and God was they meeting secretly. Are they committing adultery? Yes, they are. Uh, yes, they are in God's eyes, marriages don't break up. But yes, they are. Because they say they are not married. So they are committing adultery. Um, but, but I don't know how you put it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Teresa is also saying, what if you give them a time of three years and the person is not changing? What should be done? Yeah, I mean, after three years, if there's no change, I think that you have the right to, to move on. That is in the case of adultery or abuse where your life is in danger. But if he's still lying, you don't divorce a person because he's lying or he's, he's, he's cheating or something. Not like sleeping with somebody, but if he, maybe he eats all the chicken and the fish, in the in the soup and things like that, he has bad manners. You don't divorce him because he has those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay. So if we flip the coin to the other side, yeah. we also want to look at all the things you stand to gain. Yeah. If, if you're it... able to work things out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because okay, look at what you stand to lose after yeah. you committed the adultery. Mm -hmm. And then also, can you look at the things you stand to gain? Yeah. If you were able to save the marriage, if you're mm -hmm. able to work things out, mm -hmm. so the lessons you would have learned. Yeah. So the next time, I'll not say this to this woman. I'll not yeah. say this to this man. The lessons you have learned in the marriage, you also see after you have been able to solve um, a marital issue like adultery and all mm -hmm. that. The stronger the bond becomes, yeah, it becomes stronger. Becomes it's like, stronger. oh, I nearly lost you. Mm -hmm. You see, it's like that that sheep that uh, the, the parable of the shepherd that Jesus said that he said that he lost one sheep and he left all the 99 and he went for that one and he picked him up and like cared for him and brought him home with that much care. When you see, sometimes we don't value each other until we see that we were about to lose each other, yeah. Then later when we are able to overcome that handle and come together, it's like we start treating each other more oh. carefully. It's like, hey, I don't want to lose you again. Or, I don't want what happened to happen again. I know how I felt when I was about to lose you. Yeah. So there are a lot of benefits if you can get the marriage to work. Yeah, so many benefits. And then the power of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If you are able to forgive your spouse yeah. and, and, you're, and you're able to restore everything together, mm. it becomes very beautiful. Yeah. It becomes very beautiful. The power, there's a there's a power, a strong power in forgiveness. Mm, mm. And you need that. Yeah. You yeah. Need that. Yeah. You need, there's, there's a strong power of forgiveness. A strong power of forgiveness. And, uh, and there's a strong power in forgiveness. That when you forgive, when you learn to forgive, it, it makes you stronger. It makes you better. It makes you more powerful. Forgiveness is powerful. Forgiveness is very, very powerful. It will enable you to to uh, 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 feel better about yourself. It also clears your conscience. And the Bible says that, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us or as we forgive those who sin against us. So when you learn to forgive, another thing it does is that it gives you confidence when you go to God in prayer as mm -hmm. well. The Lord forgiving this person, it empowers your own prayer life yeah. because you know that you have walked in forgiveness. And it also gives you that confidence that, I'm not going to sin necessarily, but if I also, for any reason, commit any other sin, I also have the confidence that because I'm able to forgive those who sin against me, I will also be forgiven. Now, these are some of the things you stand to gain. Plus, you'll be more mature, you'll be more enlightened. Your experience can also help save many other people. You know that people who go into, into this kind of phase, and there's been an infidelity, and then they break down the marriage, they, they, they divorce. When you meet them, they only have nasty stories to talk about marriage yeah. and about infidelity. If it happens, walk away because they walk away. They are telling everybody to also walk away, right? They will, and they will, those are the people who say all men are the same. No matter what you do for a man, he will, he will not do anything or he will do this, he will do that. Men are not grateful. Men are this, men are that. You see, they become bitter. There is power in forgiveness. Forgiveness makes you, it releases some Something out of you. Forgiveness makes you more 
peaceful, more joyful, more loving. But those who are not able to forgive, they are always looking for reasons to justify why they couldn't forgive. Yeah. So they always have to look for negative things to say. Men are evil. Men are this. Men are that. Life is not all about money. This, that, that, that. And they talk and they talk and they talk. And that negativity is used to to, to, to destroy other people. Whereas if they are chosen to stay together, if they are chosen to forgive, they will use that experience to rather encourage other people. When somebody goes through anything, they say, my sister, I've been there. God will give you grace. God will help you. Let me pray with you. Let me counsel you. If you need me, come to me. I'll be more than willing to help you. I'll be willing to stand with you. And all these things, you'll be helping saving many, many more. So the scripture says that except a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, yes. it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears more fruit. So if you're able to hear your own desire, your own your own uh, offense and bitterness, and it's painful, if you're able to overcome your own pain, you become a living legend to saving so many other people. Yeah. Thank you. I want to read a few more comments. Read comments and please share. share. Please share the broadcast for us. Please share. Please share. So mommy is saying, hmm, God help us all. I pray for all non-perfect but very good men here. God continue to bless you and keep you and give you long to spend better time with us. I salute my husband, Frederick Odami. Numero uno, you are the perfect, you are not perfect like me, but you are the best. Um, and then mommy, somebody said that we should we should divorce, that we, we become side chicks, because side chicks is big. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rabbi said, Mommy, this generation needs God. We are losing every day. We've normalized the bad and ugliness of life. Yeah. We don't fear God and we take and we take his creation for granted. Yeah. I always pray for mercy. Yeah. And Jibola is saying, please help her sister. Okay, we'll talk about that because mm. she always comes on our book. Tana is mm. saying, What what are things men and women do that will cost divorce? That will be right. I, Sorry, I didn't get your question very well, Tane. If you could rephrase, rephrase it, please, mm. so I can read it. Mm. All right, are you done? Yeah. Okay. All right, so send in your questions, send in your comments, and please share the broadcast with us as well. Send in your comments, send in your questions, and we will be more than happy to pick them Ah, okay. So look at what you stand to gain. There are so many benefits. I know people who have survived uh, 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 um, adultery, and it has been a blessing. If so, adultery does not mean that you must close down their marriage. Adultery does not mean if you can forgive, it is the better option. If you can forgive, unless, like we said, the exception, when this thing has become a norm, it's always happening. It's a constant thing. It's ruining your life. Then you may have the reason to, but if it's just a one-off or something like that, my sister, don't rush off. My brother, don't rush off. Try forgiveness. Try forgiveness. And let us see if the Lord can help you. Try forgiveness. Because forgiveness also helps a lot. Then Please. there's also the testimony of victory. Mm -hmm. That I mean, that is that is just the the, the um, icing of the cake. Yeah. That with all the things we went through, mm -hmm. we got to a point we saw that we were even about to lose each other. To the, yeah. the fear of divorce mm -hmm. and all the impact it was going to have on us. Yeah. But we managed to overcome it. Mm. It is a testimony. Yeah, it's a testimony. And it is a testimony to the glory of God. Yeah. That that which the enemy wanted yeah. for us did not come yeah. to us, even though he came in to try. Yeah. It is a testimony. It's a testimony. Because the thief came in not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yeah. Satan is always wanting to destroy one married yeah. after the other. Yeah. But the married that is able to overcome, this is a he who overcomes, I'll give him the crown of life. Yeah. No, we have to learn to overcome certain things. Mm -hmm. We have to learn to overcome certain things, especially if it's not an everyday thing. We have to learn to overcome. The, the testimony of knowing that Satan wanted to destroy us, but we overcame. Yeah. We won. We thrived. We rose. It's a powerful thing. And that testimony will help many. And even your children will look at it and say, listen, my parents came to the point where they nearly divorced, but they didn't. And that thing will strengthen them and they will also Use that same example. If in their marriage they go through any difficulty, they'll look at how their parents survive and they will stand on it to say, if my parents did not divorce, I am not going to divorce. Sometimes for the sake of your children, hold on to that marriage and don't let it die. Don't let it die. Okay. Thank you. Tanya has rephrased her question. What mm. are things men and women do to each other that's worth divorce? 
maybe we'll we'll talk about that later. Ah, I mean the Bible only allows one thing, and that is adultery. adultery. Yeah. That is the only thing the Bible allows that if it happens, people can commit a, a divorce. It's adultery. Apart from that, there's nothing that a person can do that should lead to divorce, ex except also that if your life is in danger, if the other party is seeking to kill you or to destroy you, <laughs> then by all means, run away and save your life. Yeah. If they are beating you, harming you, oppressing you in a dangerous way, then yes, by all means, walk away. Somebody saying that the very first one is physical abuse non-stop. Yeah, if there is physical abuse non-stop, please walk away. You are not a punching bag. Don't allow yourself to be destroyed. Don't allow yourself to be destroyed. I think that after you have looked at all the things you want to you start to gain, yeah. also start serious dating once again. Yeah. Now, and when adultery happens, trust is broken. Yeah. And you need to win the trust. You become strangers again, you yeah. know that. Yeah. You become strange because it's so shocking that you begin to think, did I really know this man? Yeah. yeah. So come on, yeah. So begin to date all over again mm -hmm. so that you can learn about each other again. Mm -hmm. And like you said, start the whole marriage thing. Yeah. It's a new marriage. Yeah. After every adultery, it's a new marriage. It's not the old marriage anymore. Things will never be the same anymore. So start like you started the first time. Start dating each other again. And the first responsibility is always on the one who went to commit the adultery. Mm -hmm. You are the one who must be working extra hard to save the marriage. Unfortunately, in our generation, there are people who commit the adultery and they would rather be sitting and waiting for the other party to come and reveal their marriage. Yeah, really a person really like care. that has no sense. They don't really care. You have to work hard to restore the marriage. So you have to work and start dating your wife again. Start taking her out to movies. Start taking her out to restaurants. Not in this COVID. They observe all COVID protocols, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but start taking her out to restaurants again. Start taking her out to the beach again. Start Start walking together. Start praying together. Start doing things together. Start drawing your wife's attention. Start winning her all over again. again. Or your, if it's your husband, if you are the woman, woman who went to commit it. Which one is easier to forgive? If a woman commits adultery or if a man commits adultery, who, which one gets easily forgiven? Right, because of the way society sees adultery. Mm -hmm. The women are expected mm -hmm. to forgive more because they say that, well, men commit adultery, but I don't believe in that. Yeah. I think it's difficult for both parties to forgive. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy. It's not easy. Yeah. So, so no, what I'm trying to say is that it generally in society, it, 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 so women are when, women, yeah, when yeah. women commit adultery, mm -hmm. are they easily forgiven by their husbands as compared to when men commit adultery? The men cannot take it faster. We can't, because, I mean, honestly, but you can you take it? If I say yes, I won't. But, but I'm not saying I will do it. I'm I know that you, I know that you will, but I'm sure because women. Please, are, if I come after you, chase me. Call my wife. With a cutlass. Please, don't just chase him. We'll chase him with a cutlass. Call my wife. Women are Tell more, her to come and get me. Women are more forgiving. Women are able to forgive a lot better because mm. the men cannot just handle the idea of somebody having an affair with me. They can't. <laughs> They can't take it. It's so difficult for them. Yet they expect yeah. us to take it. It's, yeah. it's equally difficult for the women, but well. you are more forgiving. Thank you, women. I stand on behalf of all the men and we say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for <laughs> your forgiveness, for your love. You take so much for us. We are grateful. Thank you. All the ladies on the broadcast, thank you. So Omolola is saying that I agree with you. He said divorce is not an option. More mm. grace, said mm. Emma. Yeah. Mm. Great. Great, great, great. So start dating again. Start dating again. Another thing you do is that the unfaithful partner must end all contacts with the object of infidelity. Okay? So you cannot say that you were sleeping with somebody, you want to change, or you, 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 you are repenting or whatever, you've been caught, whatever it is, and you still have the girl's number on your phone. Then you are not sorry, Pastor. You, you still visit the person. You are, visit. You are setting yourself yourself up to commit adultery yeah because it's so you must break all contact with the person delete their number block their them number. <laughs> block them if you work in the same place with them change jobs in fact if you have to relocate just yeah relocate. if you go to the same church with them change churches or tell them to leave their church <laughs> if you don't want to leave if you think that that church is too good for you, you don't want to leave tell them to leave the church 
because you cannot be in the same church with them. So let them move away from where they are. Maybe you have to be relocated, like mommy saying, yeah, go to another to city. Yeah. Or go to another yeah, country, go to Belgium, yeah. go somewhere completely different so that you don't get to see them. If you are really serious about saving their marriage, there must be complete separation. You cannot say, we won't do it again, but we still see each other, we still visit, we still talk, but it's over. No. Like Momo, or something like this. Sure say, say, say it in English so that those who don't understand that language can understand. What they are saying is that once, once bitten, twice shall. <laughs> <laughs> when you've been bitten once, you'll be bitten again. <laughs> but the actual thing is twice uh, shall. But yes, it is true. A barrier that you've already broken, you don't struggle to break it again. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've had anything to do with a person, don't hang around the person. Cut them off completely. Don't say from today we are just friends. No, you will do it again. So cut them off and make sure that your spouse knows that you have completely cut them off. The lot of is saying that they say it as mechanic or plumber. <laughs> They said the name as yeah, mechanic. they changed the name as mechanic. Oh, that is somebody who is not ready to change. This thing that we are talking about, we are talking about people who are ready to change, those who are ready to repent, <laughs> not those who just want to carry on. If you just want to carry on with that like that, my sister or my brother, you, you are deceiving yourself. You are the one who will go to hell eventually, mm -hmm. even if you get away with it here on earth. So you keep on changing people's name to mechanic. <laughs> carpenter and <laughs> like a plumber keep changing names <laughs> on the judgment day Jesus is just going to show you plumber <laughs> so go to where plumber is so please change and change well all, yeah, they old say fire. old charcoal burns faster old, yeah. Amma also said old fire with simple lighting yeah. old charcoal burns faster yeah. yeah that is true that is true so, they, read that he's saying they say them as a, as a man's name instead of a yeah man. Ricky Ricky? <laughs> no, no, like, no, what I'm saying is the girl is called Rita, but they say the name as Ricky. <laughs> so you don't know. You don't That's know again. Right. right. Okay, so cut off all uh, 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 contacts. Cut off contacts. Another thing you have to do that will help you uh, uh, save your marriage. Okay, so, sorry, Paul. Okay. So, quick, Lady Marcellus is saying, how about he wants you back because you're financially, financially okay. But when he filed the divorce, he was the only, he was the one who was a breadwinner. And she went to say, since I said no, he's been giving me troubles. Yeah, yeah then, no, no, no. If he's only wanting you for your money, he wants to use you. Some men are users, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Don't give in. Don't give in. If he doesn't genuinely love you and he only wants your money, it's not, it's not going to be well eventually. So don't do it. Don't give in. Right. Another thing that you must do is to cut off from anyone who has not been or is not in favor of your marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, for, 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 for every marriage, there are people who don't like it. People who say, don't marry the person. Don't marry this person. This person is like that. This person is like that. Don't marry them. Now, after you've married them, they are always looking for an opportunity to say, I told you so. Mm -hmm. I told you don't marry this person. I told you this guy is bad. I told you this guy is bad. So, I get to find out. I get to find out that uh, um, you've, had you, you've had an issue an affair has taken place these people will now push that this is the time you must divorce make sure that you break free from this man divorce this man, divorce this woman I told you he's wicked, I told you she's evil and they will fight until they break their marriage so cut them off completely don't let them know David said tell it not in God so that the daughters of Philistine do not mock that uh, 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 Saul has been killed Okay, so when these things happen, don't call negative people and tell them that at ah, least what my husband has done, this is what my wife has done. They will jubilate, they will help you to divorce, they will give you all the opportunities, they will tell you to pack your things and come and live in the house today to start the divorce process. Don't involve them because after all, you will not marry that person when your marriage breaks down. They will now begin to push your back to go back to where you belong, and it may be too late. So cut those people off. In terms of this, you need people who will encourage you, not people who will bring you down, not people who will help you down the line of failure. You need people who will strengthen your hands to succeed. So work on that. Okay, I've got a question. Okay. Before that, and um, thank you, Delanem, for being a supporter. She's a supporter plus two. 
Oh, God, God bless you. you. God bless you. you. So Tana is asking a question. Can you still talk to your old relationship, but no more relationship between you guys? Just friends. Please no. Stay it's not helpful. It's not helpful. So let them thank you. And anybody else who can become a supporter, please feel free and do so. The green button is next to the like button. It's just £3.50 to support. We want to upgrade our presentation. We want to upgrade the broadcast. So help us do so. £3.50. Even if you are not in a pound nation, it will convert for you. I think it will be about $5. It's less than $5. £3.50 is about $4. So if you're in a dollar, US dollar place, that is what it is. I don't know how it will be in Canadian dollars or Australian dollars, but whatever it is, if you are not able to do so, don't worry at all. Don't worry at all. Okay. Uh, yeah, carry also, on. I think another thing you need to do is to cut off anyone who has not been a good influence in their marriage. Yeah. Obviously, people commit adultery because of bad influence sometimes. Mm -hmm. When you have a friend who keeps telling you, as a man, if you have a garden, you need a, If you have a farm, you need a garden constantly. Yeah. They keep saying it into your mind. You need, you need a garden. You need a mm -hmm. garden. By the time you realize you are sinning, yeah. such people should not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. Once they have helped you to sin, they walk away quietly. Yeah. And then they tell you that, well, it was your choice. Mm -hmm. I didn't say go and do it. I only yeah. suggested it. Yeah. You. You had a choice to do it or not to do it. So such people, please stay away from them. People who have had bad influence on your on your relationship or on your marriage, mm -hmm. cut them off. People who introduce drinking, who introduce you to drinking, who draw you to nightclubs, who introduce ladies to you, cut them off. Okay, I'm not saying it's five pounds. Oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Uh, 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 cut them off. Hey, uh, Mr. Norris is asking, does it include in-laws? If an in-law fights against the marriage, then cut them off. I'm not saying don't visit them, but don't talk to them. Yeah, don't let them know them. that this is what is happening. Yeah. And if they are bad influence on the marriage, cut them off. Cut them off. If they, they are leading you to sin or leading your husband or your wife to sin, then you cut them off because you want to save the marriage. You want to save the marriage. And to save the marriage, you have to work at... at, at uh, <laughs> Yeah, cut them off. Cut them off. Kind of because they will not help you. They will not help you at all. So Nancy is asking a question. When yeah. a person suspects uh, his or her partner of committing adultery, is it a good idea to investigate? Because some people will not change unless they are caught. Say the question again. Read it. If a person suspects that their partner is committing adultery, mm -hmm. is it a good idea to investigate them? No. Because some people will not change unless they are caught. Uh, no. You see, you just pray. God will expose them. Don't waste your little precious time trying to chase them all over the place. Because I'm saying this because I've seen sometimes some women become very paranoid and they set up investigators, people with cameras chasing their husband everywhere they go. Now, if it happens that they are not actually doing it and he finds out that you have set all these things up trying to follow them, that will also breach trust. Okay? Look, sin can never be hidden. Sin will, it will eventually come out. It will eventually come out. So please don't waste your time. Focus on your life. Do your best. Do your best. Just focus on enjoying your marriage. If they are cheating, eventually it will come out. Don't make yourself an investigator trying to find out. Jesus says that first remove the love from your own eyes. Don't go looking for the speck in other people. You yourself, are you perfect? None of us is perfect. Ad ad adultery is also sin, just like lying or cheating, right? It's also sin. So you focus on building your own righteousness. Leave your husband alone. Leave your wife alone. If they are living in sin, eventually it will come out. God will expose them. Don't waste your time and involve yourself in it. Okay, so Nana is saying that please let's support a good cause. It will be a blessing and to save many marriages if you can afford God bless. You. She was actually our first supporter. Nana, God bless you so much. She says support us. She supported us. Supporter number one. Yeah. <laughs> Daughter plus one. Yeah. So if you can also do it, please feel free and do it. It's three pound fifty if you are in the UK. If you are in the US, I think it's about five dollars. Yeah, I'm not satisfied. It's about five dollars. You can easily do that, and it will be a blessing. But don't be under pressure. If you cannot do it, we still love you the same. It's all right. We'll still come on the broadcast. We'll still come on the broadcast. Don't worry about we it. are. We have been paying for all the things already. Yes, but just that we thought that there might be somebody out there who would be willing to help. Because people with have actually asked us. Because, about. yes, people have asked us over and over, how can they support? How can they support? That's why we have made this available for those who want to support. But if you are not in the position to, don't worry at all. God bless you. Yeah, let's carry on. There must also be, the, the couple must revisit what would have led to the 
occurrence of infidelity, post, yeah. post mortem. Yeah, so you have to do a post mortem. You have to do a post mortem. Why did I do this? Why did I do this? Even though there might have been pull factors, might have been push factors, but at the final moment that I ended up doing that thing, why did I decide to do that? You have to ask yourself some of these questions and see what could I have done differently? What could I have done differently in the midst of all my wife was doing to me? In the midst of what all this lady was doing for me? What could I have done to have avoided the adultery from taking place? Could I have just been bold enough to say, lady, I don't want from today, I don't want to talk to you again. Could I have sat down with my wife and talked to her and say, Honey, there is this lady I have met and she, I think she's drawing my attention. Honey, the way you dress these days is putting me off. Can we change something about it? Honey, I feel tempted in this place. Can you help me? Can you pray with me? Can you bear me up in prayer? I feel my prayer life is going down. What could I have done to save myself from going into that pit? So you have to ask yourself those questions and it will help you to uh, properly diagnose the way out in order not to get yourself into that problem the second time. And also, there must be a strong willingness, especially on the part of the offender, to submit to a new regime of accountability mm -hmm. and openness, as well as restrictions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have been let out, you have been having your freedom, mm -hmm. and in your freedom, you have come home with a baby. We cannot just allow you to still have every day still going out the way you used to go. No. <laughs> Regime don't change. You are not going out the way you used to go. So you must submit yourself to a new regimen. You must submit yourself where your wife can now have access to your phone. No longer, no more passwords, no more pin. Or if you have it, your wife must now know it. Your wife, your wife must now know the details of your banking, your spending. They must know, have access to your bank to be able to log in every day to know where you are spending, what you are withdrawing money for, where you are, what things you are buying. She must know all these things. She must know all these things, or he must know all these things, depending on who it is. So now you must become more open. There must be more accountability. Your wife should know everywhere that you are going. If, if I better still go with them, wherever you go, as much as it is possible, Except maybe you work and things like that, but if you can find a job where you both do together or in the same area so that lunchtime you can meet together, you have to change the regime. You have to change the regime. You cannot keep having a private Facebook account, private bank account, private email, private this. Can easily no, no, because those things help you to sin. The Bible says, whoever confesses sin does not prosper, but he who confesses and repents from it obtains mercy. To confess means to come open, to come clean. It means you no longer hide anything. No more secret passwords. No more secret things. Your wife must know everything. Your husband must know everything in your everything. And that will help you. <laughs> Angela, I came home with a new baby with your freedom. No, no, that's not possible. You can't come home with a new baby and still expect to have freedom. No. If you come home with a new baby, freedom is gone. Freedom is gone. That's basically okay. the end of it. That's basically the end of it. You can't do that. Right. Right. Is the sound okay? Yeah, because I, I heard a few people complain about the sound. Is the sound gone again? I mean, I think we have to go back to the, the old way of broadcasting. No, this looks nice. This one looks nice, but I don't think that it has worked well for us. So, Victoria's going say, oh, Lady Pasta, God bless you for joining us. She said, I thought the sound was from my side, but now they said they can hear us. Mary, so okay. I was like, ask for that. Please, can you just give us a thumbs up or a wave or something if you can hear? If the sound it, is good, it's yeah. Okay, I heard um, one or two. Oh yes, please. it's fine. Okay, 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 great. Okay, Thank great. You. All right. Okay, okay. Let's let's let's. Continue. I think another thing you will have to do for you to restore the marriage, or mm. for you to, I mean, get back into the marriage when mm. there's been adultery, is that you must seek counsel where it is needed. Yeah. And uh, Pastor, I'm so sorry to say that, but I think that men find it very difficult. To go for marriage counseling. Is that I don't think that it leads to destruction? I don't pride. think it's just marriage counseling. It is counseling of every type. It's pride. They no, pride. when it comes to money, they are willing to go for counseling to get more money. But they but, want to go to counseling for more money. But when it comes to marriage, pride, a lot of men are filled with foolish pride. They want to pretend that they are doing nothing wrong. Yeah. Because they don't want to change. Mm -hmm. So don't tell my pastor, don't tell the counselor, don't let anybody know we are facing this. But they are the first people to go out to tell everybody that my wife is doing this and my wife is doing that. Yeah. But for them, they don't want the wife to let anybody know what they are, what they are doing wrong. It is bullying. It is cheating. It's bullying. 
So if you're a woman, don't allow your wife, your husband to insist, hey, don't tell anybody my problem. We don't want anybody to hear our problem. And he's not changing. He's not changing. And he says, don't tell anybody. That means that he wants to continue abusing you till the end. Don't worry about whether he is happy about that. Tell it to someone who can help you. Tell a counselor. Tell your pastor. It's like your husband is sick at home. You know he's dying. He says, I don't want you to tell any, any doctor. Yeah. And you also live. If he dies, whose fault is it? It will be your fault. So call the ambulance. Call for help if you're a wife. And your husband says, I don't want anybody to know my problem. But your marriage is not getting better. You see, the man who says, I don't want anybody to know my problem is the one who has gotten up and is working on it and the marriage is enjoyable. You are enjoying it. Then you can believe that, oh, my husband said we shouldn't tell anybody and the problem is solved, so happy. But he keeps on doing the same thing. And he says, don't tell anybody. That man is a wicked person you are married to. And you have to override that thing and tell it out so that you get help. Don't sit down and cover my husband. He doesn't want anybody to know our private affairs until the day they throw your, 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 your bags outside. That go, I don't want you anymore. Or until the day he goes and bring it tightly to you. Then you cry, I should have told pastor. I should have told the counselor. I should have told somebody. Please seek counseling if your marriage is dying. If you are struggling in your marriage. If it is a burden, seek counseling. The Bible says that with many advisors, make war. It's very, very important that you get counsel. Get counsel. Where, where there is no counsel, what, what happens? Um, give me that scripture. You don't remember. I, I also don't remember. But counsel is very, very important. So get counsel. Get counseling. Get counseling uh, uh, as to, uh, to deal with what led to the infidelity. Get counseling on it. If it was a character problem, if it was a communication problem, whatever the problem was that led to the infidelity, get counseling in how to solve and overcome it. If it's a, 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 the healing process, get counseling. What are the things we can do to help us heal quicker and to restore the marriage? Uh, counseling with repentance, with forgiveness, with a renewal of the love. Go for counseling. Creating a new vision for the new marriage. Counsel will help you in doing this. Only a fool rejects counsel when they are still suffering. Only a fool rejects in medicine the when they are still sick. Lady, thank you, lady. In the multitude of counsel, there, there is safety. safety. Yeah. Safety. Thank you. Safety. Thank you. So get get counsel. Get safety. counsel. I think another thing you also need to do is to seek ways of renewing emotional and physical connection. Yeah. You need to because when adultery happens, it, it draws you apart. Yeah, you, yeah. You don't, I mean, the last thing you want to see is the face of somebody who has committed adultery and yeah. cheated on you. But it's important that you seek uh, ways of renewing your emotional and physical contact. Mm -hmm. We're talking about things like holding hands, mm -hmm. holding hands, looking at each other, holding hands often so mm -hmm. that you bond, yeah. sitting together. When you sit together, try and sit very close together because mm -hmm. you want that connection to be fine. <laughs> you want that connection to be there. Mm -hmm. Sit together, hold mm -hmm. hands mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Look at each other often. Yeah. Look at each other often. Mm -hmm. You know, there's 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 something nice about looking into your partner's eyes, your mm -hmm. husband's eyes, <laughs> looking, looking into your husband. Yeah, your especially husband. yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's continue that especially one. yeah. That one, yeah, one. when you look into look and into then, each other's eyes, it is nice. And then and then taking walks together. Can we continue? Please? Yeah, take long walks together. Sometimes just leave the car behind and yeah, walk, walk to the shop. If what you go to buy is not a heavy thing. It might be a long walk, but walk together. It will give you the opportunity to talk and to bond together, okay? It will take you back to how you were before you even married. Sometimes, some of us, before we married, we were not rich. I didn't have a car before we married. And we oh, used to we walk, 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 yeah. But one beautiful place that you can walk is along the seaside. Yeah. It's so nice. But it's quiet and the breeze, you just... You can you can just walk for minutes without saying anything to mm. each other, but you're just walking and enjoying the yeah. company. So so uh, renew emotional and the physical connection, the holding of hands, looking at each other, walking, watching movies together. Last night I watched a movie with my wife and she was crying <laughs> and it was so touching. It was so beautiful to see her crying about a movie that meant nothing. <laughs> Completely useless, <laughs> but for her, it was very emotional. She had to weep and weep, and I had to and, comfort and her. And you know, me. I just had to comfort. I love that. Her. I love that. Her. What is what is sad about this movie? Is it the airplane or the shape of the airplane? Because an airplane came to 
laugh and then she started crying. So I said, ah, it's so because the airplane is ugly, that's why you are crying or what? And she the cried title and cried. The title of the movie. Oh, a, a United Kingdom. Yes, the title of the movie is A United Kingdom. It's very nice. It's very, very nice. A United Kingdom. <laughs> It's, it's about how Botswana became a democratic country. Yeah. It, it was very, very, very nice. A United Kingdom. Watch movie with your wife. I like watching movies with my wife. And then she cries. And then I have to comfort her from crying. And it's very, very nice. Yes, <laughs> Jackie says she's emotional also. Then Jackie, watch a lot of movie with your husband. You will like it. You will like it. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so let there be a clear assurance of forgiveness and yeah. readiness to go. I mean, if you have when you have forgiven, yeah, let your husband or your wife know that look, I have forgiven mm -hmm. you, and we, we just put this behind us. Yeah, well. don't and say you forgive me, but I, mean, I, uh, uh, I can't believe you actually did this. Yeah, and if, you know, today is exactly uh, one year since I caught you and 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 was give me a name. <laughs> Since I caught you and Marjorie, and, 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 and Marjorie is too far. <laughs> I caught you and Marjorie in bed. It is exactly one year. It was exactly 1.30 p.m. that I caught you. Don't do that. If you are forgiving, let it go. Don't let it go. Don't keep reminding me. Don't celebrate anniversaries of, of the offense. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. All right. And then uh, what else? Uh, find the right time to restart sexual intimacy. Find the right time. Oh, Pastor, you know when there's adultery, yeah. there is no intimacy, mm -hmm. I mean, between the couple. Mm -hmm. When adultery takes place, mm -hmm. there isn't, you know that. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is cut off. It is yeah, cut yeah, off. yeah. I mean, you, 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 it will be very, very hard mm -hmm. that right after adultery, you... Especially you, when you know about it. Yeah. You go back into it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. So, so, uh, but take time. Take time. Nana Ekwa is saying, "What well, I have forgiven him, but I won't forget it. That no, try and forget. <laughs> you have to try and forget. If you don't forget, it's not nice." The uh, authorities say that don't allow memories of the past to kill you. Yeah. Yes, let the past go. Yeah. You see, like I've forgiven all the things you did in the past, and now we are joining the marriage. You see, so forgive and don't go back to it. Just let it go. Let it go at all. Find the right time to restart sexual intimacy. It should not be forced if any party is not comfortable to prevent a permanent scar or a scare off. Because if you force that, hey, we must do it, we must do it, it, it may completely put the other party off and that will rather be worse. Yeah. It, 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 it will be worse. So take time. Take time, work through things, work through things. It will start with the holding of hands, looking at each other. And if I tell you, find that somewhere we love each other after all. I love you after all. And then gradually, you give in and you reintroduce the fish into the ocean. And you can swim all along. So that is very, very important. And then also avoid people and places that bring back memories of the third party or the places connected to the affair. Mm -hmm. So avoid any place. The restaurant you used to go with a girl you were cheating with, don't take your wife there. The dresses or the perfume that the other party used to use that attracted you, don't buy the same perfume for your wife and tell, this is the perfume she was using that attracted me. No, buy a different one. Don't do anything that will bring memories. Anything that can easily bring memories. Cut such people and cut such places and such things off of your lives so that you will not remind yourselves of that problem okay and then also you need to pray prayer you need to pray prayer is so important mm. in this because when adultery takes place the head around the marriage is broken yeah and you allow all the demons and the serpents and all those things yeah you allow negative thoughts unforgiveness all the negative things mm. that surround marriages you allow all those things into the marriage yeah and one way of taking all those evil things out of the marriage is by prayer yeah so it's extremely important that and and when i talk about prayer i'm talking about the offended person praying mm -hmm. and the one who has been offended i mean and the offend the offender, offender and the offended. offended or the offended yeah they yes 
they all pray, both of you praying together and praying individually as well. Yeah, it's important that you and pray. we don't mean little little prayer, we mean Extensive. serious and, and effectual and then prayer. Yeah. Sometimes because when sorry, when when adultery takes place, the devil has entered their marriage. It will take some level of prayer to drive him out. Yeah. So don't joke with prayer if you want to rebuild their marriage. Say what you want to do. And sometimes you may have to add fasting as well. Oh yes, a lot of because it. because um, adultery is a spirit mm -hmm. and it has to be cast out of the mind. This kind goeth not yeah. out, but by prayer yeah, and fasting. Exactly. Because some of these once they enter the home. It's very likely to come again. again. And it's very, very difficult to drive them out. Yeah. You need to persist in prayer. You need to persist in fasting constantly. Mm. Pray and fast together. Yeah. Fast, pray and fast individually as well. Mm -hmm. You may want to pray for mercy. Pray yeah. for mercy. Pray that God will have mercy on yeah. you. God will have mercy on, on the their marriage. marriage. For the sake of your children. Yeah. For the sake of your future. God have mercy. Save this marriage. And then you pray for deliverance. From any spiritual entanglement, God, any pollution that has come into my husband, any pollution my husband has gone to pick and brought into me, any pollution that has come into this marriage, Lord, we break it, we break it, we break it off. So pray for the breaking away of any any spiritual entanglement. Pray for the healing of the pain, the pain you have caused your wife, the pain you've caused your husband, the pain you are feeling. Ask God to heal you. Ask God to help okay, you. You need to pray for the restoration of the marriage. Yeah. That the marriage will be restored. Mm -hmm. Whatever has been lost, whatever has been stolen from the marriage because of the adultery will be restored. So yeah. that you can have your marriage back. Mm -hmm. And also pray for the ability to forgive because it's not easy forgiving a, a, a partner who has committed adultery. Yeah. It's not easy. The devil will constantly remind you of mm -hmm. the thing that happened. Mm -hmm. Even when your husband is going out, hey, is he going out to, to sin? And, and the pain comes back all over again yeah so it's important that you pray and, and ask god to help you they are saying no sound no sound please can you hear us i just said no sound please if anybody else can hear us let us know let us know oh uh, i haven't felt this broadcast i think that we will have to go back to the old style no sound again no sound hello can you hear us please if you can hear us, please let us know that you can hear us. We are about to finish, so if you can hear us, let us know so that we can. Uh... Yeah. Okay, great. Great. I think great. it just goes and comes. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, pray for the marriage to be restored and also pray for the ability to forgive. Pray for the ability to forgive because it will take divine power. You see, you can forgive if your husband stole your five pounds. But if your husband or your wife slept with another person, you need grace from above to forgive. So please, pray for grace from above to forgive. Right. Another thing that will help you in restoration is that you must learn to undertake a serious capacity building for the marriage against possible future reoccurrences. Okay? So you have to look. Well, was there any weakness in our marriage that brought this thing? Now we have to build ourselves up, strengthen ourselves, fortify ourselves so that this thing doesn't happen again, especially after there's been a first crack. You have to rebuild yourself so that the second crack doesn't come so easily. Sorry, Pastor. Yeah. The lady is saying that she hasn't had any problem with sound at all. All throughout. All th no, lady, 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 Master said, I've not experienced any sound issues at all. Right. And the lady is also telling the others, she thinks it's from their side, but she has okay. not experienced any sound. All right, sure. okay, it is well, <laughs> it is well, it is well, okay, all right. Um, and then the offended party must protect their hearts from bitterness. Mm. You have, to be, very you have to be very careful because Satan can come so things into your ears. Yeah, you have to be bitter. Why did he do this to you? This is not right. And then you see, bitterness is a pity party. If, if, if you and demons having that kind of party. Nobody has been bitter and been held by it. But Satan will give you that the excuse that you have the right to be bitter. But bitterness never helps anybody. Bitterness never helps anybody. So pray uh, uh, for the grace not to become offended and not to be bitter. Uh, protect your heart against resentment, against jealousy. Protect your heart against those things. No, let it go. It's not because you are less... I mean, you, you are less valuable. That's why that happened. Think some of these things happen. Mm -hmm. Don't don't look down on yourself. Don't become depressed. Don't allow those things. Rise up. 
and shine and take what is rightfully yours. And finally, the offender must also be very, very careful with their words and attitudes, not to give the affair any excuse. No, that is because of your character, especially when your wife has now done something that made you angry. Don't use the affair as an example. You know, these are the things you did and I went for that girl the other day. No, 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 be, be a wise man. Be deep in your thinking. Don't allow such things to revisit your marriage in any way at all. I don't know if you have anything to add, any questions, any comments, and then we will pray and we will finish the broadcast for the day. Mm, I, I think that um, if adultery has taken place, mm -hmm. it can be restored. Yeah. Your marriage can be restored. Mm -hmm. But like we have said, you need to work on it, take time, pray, and change the whole culture of the marriage yeah. to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So mm. it's painful, but it is doable. Yeah. It is doable. Yeah. Yeah. So please, in case your marriage has gone into any of these difficulties, don't be quick to write it off. And in cars, get involved in accidents, sometimes they can be salvaged. Your marriage is far stronger than a car. Don't be quick to write it off. Seek every possible means to rebuild it, unless it is really beyond what can be salvaged. Don't let your marriage die. Don't let it go away because of adultery. Adultery is painful. Adultery is wicked. Adultery is evil but we can overcome it. We can build better marriages in spite of, not because of, in spite of adultery, we can still build better marriages. And it's a prayer for you that you will never experience anything like that. And for those of you who may have experienced something like that, I pray in the name of Jesus that God will help you and heal you and restore you and empower you and help you so that you can heal quickly and we will not continue to carry the pain. I pray that your marriage will not die. I pray that God will restore your marriage, keep it up for you, for the future generations and for your own peace of mind. It's painful to walk around knowing that is my ex, that is my ex. I pray that that will not be your story. For those of you who've gone through it and it was not possible to save the marriage and the marriage is already gone, I pray that the Lord will have mercy upon you if the marriage can be restored, I pray that he restores. If God can take you further and restore and set you in another place where you will experience love and peace, I pray that the Lord will help you with it. May God help us all in the name of Jesus. Please share the broadcast before we go away. Please share the broadcast before we go away. And then we are going to pray and then uh, sign off today. So uh, before we pray, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, Maybe you just listen because of marriage, but you are not really a born again Christian. You can get two blessings in one. Get saved. Let Jesus become your Lord. Become a born again Christian. Love the Lord, and you see that He will help you in your marriage side as well. And most importantly, He will take you to heaven. Don't go to hell. Don't go to hell when you can go to heaven. Jesus has already paid a price for you to go to heaven. Accept Him today as your Lord and personal Savior. Let Him hold your hand and take you to heaven. You never regret doing so. God bless you. So, mommy, you're going to pray with our loved ones out there. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart to pray, pray, and then I'll take it off and uh, take it over as well, and then we'll finish. Let's pray. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for this opportunity to be in your presence and to sit at your feet and learn. In Amen. the name of Jesus, I want to pray for anybody out there who has been listening to us or has been on and left the broadcast, mm. who has had a very painful marriage because of adultery, yeah. whose heart is bleeding because mm. of adultery, who is hurting because of, of adultery. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the grace to forgive. I pray for the grace. Help them to forgive, God, and I pray that you help them to, to heal because it's difficult for them to restore their marriages, restore their marriages, restore their love for their husbands, restore their love for their wives. Heal them from let the pain be, be, be taken out of their heart. Let, let all the heads be taken away from their heart in the name of Jesus and I pray for the person who has committed adultery and is even finding it difficult to forgive himself or herself and doesn't know how to come out of it in the name of Jesus we pray for the grace Lord that they will be able to come out of it abide the spirit of adultery Lord anybody who has been held down 
by the spirit of adults and it is ruining their marriages in the name of Jesus we bind that spirit we set them free in the name of Jesus we pray that marriages will be restored once more let there be love in marriages Lord let marriages be built on trust and on, and on honesty and on faith once more in the name of Jesus and Father we build a wall of fire around any marriage of God that has not tasted that God we declare that it will not come near them in the name of Jesus we protect these marriages from the spirit of adultery we pray for the grace to be faithful to each other in the name of Jesus we thank you and we bless you in Jesus name amen. Jesus amen and Father we continue to lift up every marriage connected to this broadcast that may be going through any other difficulty that is not with regards to what we have talked about it might be a health issue financial issue whatever it is Father we pray in the name of Jesus for your intervention and for your help Lord we pray for our brothers and sisters who are trusting you for a loved one trusting you for a husband trusting you for a wife we pray Lord that you make a way for them Lord those who are trusting you for the fruit of the womb we pray that you open it up for them Lord people who are trusting you for their children we pray that their children will be restored will be healed will be empowered whatever, whatever the need is those who are trusting you for their businesses Lord we pray that you touch them Lord every need that is brought before you on this broadcast, we pray that your grace and your mercy will beat upon it and turn it around into a testimony. We thank you for your goodness in the name of Jesus. Anyone who is not safe, who has been on this broadcast or is on this broadcast, Father, we pray that your saving hand will touch them. Save them, don't let them go to hell. Save them, Father. Save any man that is in danger of being destroyed and that those in it don't even know. Lord, save them and deliver them. Let grace be released. We give you praise and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you so much. Thank you for your patience. We know this broadcast has not been like the regular one. Uh, and those of you who have been patient and been able to stay with us, we are grateful. We love you. Please share the broadcast before you go. Don't forget to go to church tomorrow if your COVID uh, uh, protocols allow you to go to church. Go to church and strengthen your, your pastor and the other believers in the church. And the Lord will bless you. Your life will never be the same. But make sure that you are observing all the necessary protocols to keep yourself safe. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. We love you. Please stay in touch with us throughout the week. If you want to be a supporter, the green button is just next to the like button. If you tap on it, it will help you to become a supporter of the channel with just £3.50 a month. It will be a blessing. It will be a blessing. So the Lord bless you so we come your way again. Make a date with us next week. We'll be with you. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And thank you, Pastor Sally, for being with me. I love you. Thank you. Yeah.